All right, well, the Collegiate Spring 2023 varsity right, action. Well. This time we are going to be discussing the matchup that the Jaguars have. It is ASU, Arizona State University, known party school, but also a known Counter Strike level 10 face it five stack school. I'll quickly bring up the match page ahead of the vetoes and. We did some discussing uh, pre-stream about what we think the maps will be. ASU has a history of first banning Overpass. Has never played Nuke in a series either. And we expect them to be picking into something like a Vertigo, something like a Mirage, or something like an Ancient. Um, Anubis will be on the table, but my, my instinct is that it will just end up being banned in the second phases and won't be picked. Um... And we expect IEPUI to be banning Inferno as well. So the maps that I think are in, are highly uh, likely would be uh, Mirage, Vertigo, and Ancient. Any, anything else to add there, Jackie CDD? Uh, no, it just... Inferno will get banned by IEPUI. ASU will easily ban Overpass, probably. And then ASU has likes to pick Vertigo. And IEPUI is going to be okay with that. They'll pick Mirage. Considering um, they might have to make some late substitutions, uh, Mirage just seems like a good map pick for IPY. Uh, leaving a third map, potentially be Ancient or Anubis. Um, considering IPY has played a lot more Ancient together, and like, yeah, have a, I just see Ancient being map three in yeah. this. I so there was a bit of a. Uh... We'll say Big Daddy A, the known IEPY star fragger who has dropped, I think, 30 bombs in every series he's played in to some extent, um, said some naughty words on uh, faceit.com and a uh, faceit pug, and he is therefore banned on the faceit platform and cannot play. He, is, he has been jailed. I even thought about making a Photoshop where Big Daddy A was behind bars, but uh, I forgot. Yeah, So I, I believe we're going to have... Uh, a JV member by the name of Frost Promise step in for this game. Um, last week, we streamed a JV game on Ancient and on, I think the other map was Mirage. Uh, Frost Promise had, I think, one or two, one versus two clutches on the A bomb site of Ancient. So if she can bring that level into the varsity game, I think that will hopefully help the team to uh, at least make a game out of this. Um, losing Big Daddy A is uh, like losing basically tied for your best fragger on an on an average basis so it's not it's not a player that you really want to be losing so filling the shoes of big daddy is not something uh it's going to be easy uh on the other hand um asu from a team perspective just on a surface level i haven't seen any of their games but on a surface level based is the player to look out for he's got 3600 elo the rest of his team is you know somewhere around the low 2000s i think they have one mid 2000s player as well um so not not a squad you can sleep on, and it's not also not a squad that you want to be subbing for either. Even if you had, uh, you know, maybe maybe a, a specific varsity sub, it's just not a sub that you want to be, not something you want to be doing, generally. Um, IEPY has made their substitution. ASU is not reacting to this lineup being finalized message yet, so it's kind of a bit strange. Uh, I hope that doesn't end up delaying this game or forfeiting this game but i guess we'll see yeah sometimes it's just like you know i uh, being an it being asu too you know they're they're probably coming in <laughs> from a long day of uh day parties it's only 6 p.m there long day of darties um stumbling in they gotta play a cs game it takes a little while um yeah. Looking get everyone forward in to some some dallas servers here for sure I mean, other than that, just some more background on this game. I think this is a 3-1 match, 3-1 uh, pool match. Generally, I think most matches are finished by now. So by the end of this game, we'll have a good idea of what IEPI will be up against, or the, the pool of teams IEPI can be up against next week. 
This is a uh, halfway through the season matchup, so turning point for both rosters. Yeah, I think uh, I'm starting to wonder if ASU is just AFK or stalling. Yeah, they they, they might be AFK or stalling. Yeah, I mean this could be a big break for IPY. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess. So we'll see. If you, if you just came in and looked at the uh, face levels, you would assume this is going to be a blowout. Yeah. Uh, I guess you, I mean, do you, I mean, IEPUI in this exact same league last season finished third, fourth. Uh, so it's kind of hard to view them as an underdog, but at the, in the same breath, you can say that three of those players that were part of that roster are not here. And, um, the replacements are at the very least lower face at levels, we'll say. So oh. maybe maybe ASU is the favorite here, and IEPR coming in as the underdogs. I think uh, it's kind of hard to make the argument that it's not the case. Do a little bit of a professional athlete pretending there is a, uh, a false enemy to so pump yourself up. Do a bit of a Jalen Ramsey. A bit of a, I guess the most recent example is what Travis Kelsey in the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody believed in us. It was a rebuild year. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, they're definitely stalling or AFK. Stalling or AFK. We will see. It. When it ends up being, <clears throat> we'll see if I. I, I do wish I, I'm not a room member, so I can't tell you. Um, wait, I might have Discord DMs. I don't have Discord DMs either, so I think IEPI is as in the dark as we are. Um, I was gonna say I don't have access to the room chat because I'm not one of the players or the coaches, so uh, we won't know any communication on that front. Well, well okay, the band was Chicago, vote. so that suggests that they're actually They didn't there. even vote. They didn't even vote. How do you know? Oh, I guess I don't know. I mean, they could have clicked it at the last second, is what I'm saying. And there's a one in three chance that that was the optimal ban. Like, if you're ASU, you're always banning Chicago servers. So there's a 33% chance that they're AFK and that was just lucky. But there's also a chance that they're just stalling and clicked at the last second. That's what's brutal about these map vetoes for Collegiate is every map they give you three minutes. Every stage they give you three minutes. It's like... You could stall for three up front, three for the server, so that's six, and then you have four vetoes. If you're, oh, well, you ban, then pick, then ban. So it's another, it's like 15 minutes of stalling that you can have if you do it optimally. And all I have to do is sit here and think about the wonderful map veto that could all the, all the permutations that we already know are probably going to come down to just three maps. <laughs> it's so sad. Yeah. So we'll see if uh, overpass gets banned or it's an RNG ban. Yeah, no, that's a good point. It's it's even more unlikely here that it would be an optimal ban if it's anything but overpass or or nuke or what's the other map that they hadn't played? No, because they, they played Inferno. So if it's anything but overpass or nuke, then it's yeah, they're probably AFK. So, in terms of where Froth Promise is going to be,
playing, there's always a tough decision between accommodating a sub and playing to your strength in general. Um, Andy, I think on maps like Mirage, would be playing around Connector. On Ancient, I, Andy, I think, played a lot of Cave and maybe... Maybe Cave. I think he played a lot of Cave. And Andy plays a side on Vertigo. So there is no one-to-one -one substitution there with Frost Promise as a sub, as far as I know her position's in JV. Mm -hmm. Maybe the... No, because she plays B Anchor on Ancient. I remember she was playing like Slant on start of rounds. She wasn't really going Cave, generally. Um, maybe there were some situations where they swapped it up, but I think generally she was playing the B bomb site. Um, and then she's playing B on Mirage on JV, and she's playing a ramp on Vertigo on the ramp side, not the side side. So there's no overlap there. So I have I don't really know how they'll handle that. Vertigo is banned. Oh, yep. They're yeah, not there. Definitely they are, AFK. <laughs> they are AFK. Wow. Okay. They are AFK. And this is an FFW then? This is a potential FFW, which... Okay. I mean, there, has, there hasn't there has been any effort to contact an admin from ASU, and the admins are incredibly accommodating on this collegiate league. Um, it could be a situation where there's like, you know, four people there for ASU and it's just their captain, but that's when I would expect the an admin to come in and, and do a substitution for... I mean, they have a coach listed. A, like, that person can play, I'm pretty sure, unless they're like a weird situation where it's actually not someone attending, but I, I would be shocked if ASU has a paid varsity coach for Counter-Strike. So my assumption is that's an actual player that could be playing. Um, and it's... This isn't a default time. This was scheduled, so... This is really weird. And the other thing is, it's not like this is a, a team that started the year 04. This is a 3-1 roster. Maybe they just have a massive seven map map pool, Jack CDD, and they're banning mm -hmm. out what they feel is IUPUI strength in Vertigo because I Maybe. picked Vertigo the last two series. But That's... if you're ASU, like surely, like if someone is like alive, like you see what like just happened, like who IUPUI subs out, right? And like you gotta be like kicking yourself, like at least like strictly, <laughs> yeah. strictly off. Just, just face like, it level, yeah. Face it level and just be like, well, they just took out a 3k elo to yeah. level 3. Like, yeah. Yeah, you right, want to get right. this match going. Yeah. You're, you're sitting there, you're underscore Z underscore dash, and you're like, man, we were we were going to play two 3,000 elo players, now we're only playing one, and there's a level 3 on the other team, and we're about to forfeit this game. Yeah, that'd be pretty tilting. But I will reserve my all of my predictions on whether this game will be played or not until this veto is over. Wait, I have Discord DMs. All right, Sherlock has sent me messages. Team is AFK, forfeit win potential. Wait, okay. once this is all done okay <laughs> so Sherlock's impression right now is that there was clear communication on time zones when it was scheduled and 
that it was you know discussed like this this wasn't like a forced default or a you know whatever we'll do this time kind of deal it was they agreed on this time uh chris has a friend on the team who was off line steam and now straylock is now remembering that when asu set the scheduling the first time it was wrong and they had to correct it so there is a possibility that asu thought this match would be taking place either at a later time or at a different time entirely um I would assume that IEPY is would be willing to reschedule for like later tonight, especially, um, and probably late Monday, if needed. Okay, here we go. Sorry. Uh, of course. Eight p.m. MST on Sunday. Eight p.m. MST is nine Eastern. No, it's actually ten Eastern. I sent that yesterday. Decline that one, and I'll send one for seven MST Sunday. Seven MST is nine. It's at seven MST now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there should be no confusion about this, I think. Uh, I thought you rescheduled across the wrong person. 7 p.m. MST. Okay. There, might, there is a possibility that they thought this game was supposed to take place at like 10 or 11 because they didn't understand time zones. Um, because like, like Sherlock and this guy had a, had a pretty extensive back and forth and with, with Sherlock fully clarifying what time that meant for EST... Um, so it looks like ASU wanted to play this game um, I don't know if that changed like if maybe somebody had had, had it home for spring break without telling the team or something <laughs> but um, I don't know if this goes to forfeit the, the stream might be back on you know it's, it's like 10 or 11 just in case uh, like yeah, if, if the match is actually played out but as of right now this is this is looking like at the very least this first attempt at this at this game is going to be forfeited. Um, but we'll see. Thanks to Straylock for that information. So, I mean, I think in any scenario where somebody on ASU shows up and tries to fix this, this Matt Vito is going to be null and they're just going to redo this whole process probably but i mean if you're iepy you have any pick you want uh i don't think that really changes anything from what we said earlier to be honest so yeah mirage ancient anubis so, I mean, I guess what that shows is IEPY is actually willing... Oh, no, because Mirage was the random pick for ASU. So, what that does say is that Ancient is the map that IEPY wants above Nuke and above Overpass. But I don't think that's surprising. Especially, I mean, you can figure that out just by looking back at their previous games, most likely. So, yeah. Well, I'm going to connect. Do you want to connect? <laughs> Or do you not, like, do you just want me to? Nah. Okay, yeah. I'll connect if something happens. Wow. It's rare that you get a forfeit win against a level 10 stack. A 3-1 level 10 stack. So... I mean, you'll always take it. Yeah. Yes, you will. Well, I guess this is a good time to test to see if CSGO is correctly. Okay, cool. All right. I've got Hunt and Coach Bug right now. Pretty good spot too. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, 
I'll, 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 I'll hold back on trying to actually analyze these positions until an ASU team member joins the server, I guess. But, um, I mean, you would guess that even just one of them would have put something in face of team chat at this point. So this is going to be a full foot win for IEPY, at least until IEPY feels gracious enough to replay later tonight, if that's the case. Or um, maybe ASU tries to reschedule for another day. But otherwise, this is looking like a pretty clean dubature. Good week for Andy to get face it banned. <laughs> he shows the right week. This is uh This is not looking good for the Sun Devils. No. Not looking good at all. How do you become a Sun Devil? Or a blue devil? Or a blue demon? It's an excellent question. Is 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 the is the Sun Devil a um like a, a retcon? like Native American iconography name? Did, did ASU used to have Native American iconography or were they always Sun Devils? I think they were always Sun Devils. They were always Sun Devils. Or Andor Devils. I think I have received another Discord DM or is this an app? Okay, Sherlock is updating me. Stay, stand by. Maybe I'll have enough time to make that Andy in prison Photoshop yet. It just, it says on hold. Oh, wait, no. It always says on hold when the. Uh, so. no, it doesn't. I don't think it does. I think okay. that, that is an admin stepping in. Sherlock just sent me dude and nothing else, which means he is reacting to something and is now waiting to fully understand the situation before typing to me. Yeah, it says so, on hold. It looks like not. somebody at Arizona State just freaking call, hit the panic button. <laughs> <laughs> called an admin. <laughs> um, it's going to be really funny. Like, I think, honestly, if IEPY wanted to just claim the forfeit win, they probably could because of the uh, the screenshot Straylock has of just him extensively making sure that they understood that it was 9 Eastern. Um, but in my opinion, they probably won't do it. Unless they want to play, like, 11 tonight. Because 11 tonight's a bit late. Although, wait, spring breaks. Yeah, never mind. It's, it's spring not late. break it's for IPY. For IPY. <laughs> it's not late. Never mind. So, well, maybe if Chris is working tomorrow, I don't know. All right. Well, I was yeah, about. Man. I was literally like 30 seconds away from just saying, like, we'll go ahead and uh, stop the stream there and come back if we have a game to play. But now it looks like we are going to have a game, or we'll at least have an update on what the game will look like okay. in a few seconds. Because, uh, yeah, on hold means an admin has has put it on hold. Yeah. Um, otherwise, it would have said. Otherwise, these maps would still be here, and there would be a timer, and afterward, it would just say uh, like two zero or one zero for IEPY. Dude, go to uh, go to face of collegiate, go to matches, and look at um, look at the aborted northeastern game. Like on the on the next to next to overview, next to overview, and then. Click uh, ongoing and go to uh, the aborted game. What do you think's going on there? Like, click it. Click the I aborted can click game. This? What do you mean by aborted game? Go to go to matches. Oh, I, you told me to go back to overview. Oh no, go to matches. You mean uh, pass, of course, or? No, 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 ongoing. This and one. And then click northeastern red. Yeah, click okay. northeastern red. 
Oh, what and, the heck? And just everyone AFK. What the everyone... heck happened here? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. One person showed up, or two people showed up. Everyone else AFK. Only Sefer showed up in the game. Wait, also, how is this even a matchup? What pool is this? There's no way the team on the right won a game in the server. Are they one and three? They're one and three, so they probably got a forfeit or something. So now we're just waiting for uh, any updates? Yeah. They won a map versus the... They did, I think... I think uh, IUPI played the other CMU team. That was a 4v5. Wow, they, did they... SHU lost a 4v5 to this team. <sighs> you know what? I don't I don't want to look anymore. That's, that's just sad. All right. Oh, we're still on hold. It looks like the it looks like Strelix having to do a lot of negotiation probably with uh the other side here. Oh, thank you. Thank you, hostage. Yeah. That'd be much appreciated. <laughs> Very interesting. All right. We'll have a, we'll have a screenshot of the chat page soon, hopefully. And I'll do my best. To, I should be able to open the Discord message in the uh, browser. Oh, okay. Yeah, it looks like it's a case of uh, daylight savings time. Ah. So daylight shower. savings doesn't switch over there. I guess. So... Mm -hmm. They wanted seven MST. We went ahead an hour. So right now in... So it's 10 EST, essentially, right? Like they want. Or... Yeah. It's 7 p.m. MST right now. Oh. Oh, wait, it did switch. No, it should switch for everyone in the U.S. Yeah. He was acting like th this this Noogie CS captain on their team is saying it's it's saying are it's you... six twenty two where they are, but it's it's not unless no. he's in like some weird county that doesn't respect it or something. And there's I don't know. No, he's no. It, it's seven twenty two, so either his clock's an update or something. But everyone in the U.S. does daylight savings. That would be so funny, dude. If like A the if the entire the... team just didn't update for daylight savings or something. But it should auto. Arizona doesn't do daylight savings. But Really? Okay, apparently Arizona doesn't. But they, when they were discussing stuff, they were always talking in standard times, right? And Mountain Standard Time is a lot more than just Arizona. So it's like, you know. Weird. Really? I thought it was an all yes. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily surprise me that Arizona doesn't bother. A few U.S. territories also refrain from serving daylight savings time. Puerto Rico. Only two states. Hawaii and Arizona. So Arizona exists on, I guess technically. What's what's California just called? Is it just Western Pacific? Pacific, Pacific, yeah, Pacific time zone. So Arizona's on Pacific time zone. Is that how that works then? At this point. Yeah, and and I even I even said like at the start because I didn't even realize that they consider themselves Mountain Time. That like, oh, it's only six PST there. Like, yeah, I just. That's how I've 
I thought it was. Yeah. Well, I mean, three of the IPI team members have work tomorrow in the morning. So I think their their hard line here is 10 p.m., which I think is exactly what the game would have started then. Yeah, because, I mean, 7 MST or 7 Arizona time, so 7, 7 P PST, PST is, is 10. 10. So if they can get their team here by 10, then we'll, they should be able to play. Um, I'll, I'll stay live for, like, another five minutes or so. If we get any more updates on, like, a hard time to start, I'll let you know. Otherwise... Um, I'll probably just turn the stream off and turn it back on at 10, or I'll just leave it AFK. Um, I, I'll i probably turn it off if it's at 10, because that's 30 minutes of just dead stream time on his YouTube VOD that we don't need to create. So uh, he can just delete this one in that case. So yeah, that's probably the best move. Even if even if they start this thing like immediately, it might be better to just stop this VOD <laughs> just restart, but we'll see. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that seems like uh that seems like something you should know about. Maybe he doesn't live in Arizona and he's only at ASU for university, so he's not all that used to having to deal with stuff like this. Um but you you as a scheduler should be aware that um especially when you're talking in standard time zones like EST and MST, you need to know these nuances. Otherwise, this happens. This is funny. Looks like there might be an effort for them to start ASAP because the admin just restarted the match room. So we, we might just be starting now, I guess. Ooh, that'd be a W. Um, I guess it just depends on how quickly Arizona captain can mobilize his team. That was expecting 30 minutes from now. A bit of a mobilization effort. Gonna start now. Okay. We'll see if Arizona can pull up, but uh, I guess just to reiterate, if... I think by now we've probably lost all the viewership we had at the start, but uh, if you weren't here at the start and are here now, we're expecting something along the lines of Mirage, um, Vertigo, and and Ancient with a, a maybe a hard maybe on a map like Anubis. But um, Vitos are going pretty quickly now, so there's no effort from, from ASU to stall. Overpass gets there's banned out by man. ASU. IEPY is going to ban out Inferno. Inferno. We'll see a Vertigo pick, Mirage pick, leaving probably Ancient. Well, 30 minutes late, but, I mean, if it was an ESCA match, we wouldn't have started until 9.15 anyway, so it's not that bad, I guess. ASU has just picked Vertigo. Wow, well, that's, that's a mama. That's a prediction. IUPU, On your mama? IUPU, IUPU I is just going to about to pick Mirage. Or, or, ASU just picked Mirage, and IUPUI isn't thinking. Yeah, I don't. I just don't think. I just don't think IEPI has the leverage to pick into something like a nuke. Nuke ban followed yeah. by probably Anubis. And there it is. So same three maps. And different orders. 
So the only difference here is that I probably will be starting on the CT side of Vertigo rather than the T side and vice versa for Mirage. Um, okay, cool. Game time. All right, so CT side Vertigo, uh, but I'll send you the IP real fast here, Jack. Um, CT side Vertigo, they will have to, I, I'm gonna modify this for you. Um, they will have to figure out where to sub in Frost Promise. Uh, the one-to-one -one sub, I think I actually may have put in the wrong IP. Unless he changed it for me. You know, it'd be really funny. As yeah. if on match pages that admins restart, this bug doesn't work. I think I just typed it in too fast. Could you try that IP? Is this uh, edited? Or that wrong? is edited. Okay, I'm in when I okay. manually edited it, but when I... I think I just copy-pasted it too fast. Okay, I'm in with the IP I sent you. Pretty sure. Okay. If that doesn't work, tell me. And I'll get you hooked up. Should be fine. Okay. Well, let's go. So yeah, as I was saying, Frost Promise typically and the JV practice she's ran through on this map as a ramp player. Um, the player that currently plays that spot for the varsity team is EXT. Um, so they need to figure out who's filling side. Side is a position that you cannot put someone who doesn't know what they're doing in that spot. So in my... If I had to make this decision, I would probably make someone who knew ramp nades throw the ramp nades. If no one knows them, then I think you're in pretty tough shape. Because I would want Straylox to be playing side here. Because he knows how to play side. He's done it for other teams. But he's also, I guarantee you, the utility ramp thrower for this roster. So, maybe you just say EXT go side. Frost Promise go ramp. And you just hope for the best. It would be really funny after all of this uh, if ASU didn't connect in time. But it would also be very sad because then admins have to restart again. <laughs> Any uh, immediate series predictions here, Jack? Uh, about how this will go? Yeah, I have my uh, opinion. I, um, it'll be interesting to see um, how this varsity roster works by uh, Dick Daddy A. Um, I, I, I honestly can't see, I, like, I could see this going three maps. Um, I think if IPUI wants to win with this lineup, um, CMX and Gumboot have to drop 30 kills. I think going into I this, the op has to go I crazy. expect ASU to win, to be honest. Um, and I think if IPI is going to win, they need to win Vertigo. Um, and Mirage. I think they need to 2-0. I don't think they're going to win on Ancient. I think, I think, prediction-wise, I think ASU wins this map 16-9, 16-10. Um, Mirage, I see it could be closer. Um, maybe I feel I could sweep out a 16-13. And then Ancient would probably go ASU's way 16-8, 16-7. I think... Um, no shot Noogie's asking for a server remake, dude. Let me alt tab. Go to Vito's. It's Denver. ASU ban Chicago. I do. I dance Dallas. It's 
if it's a normal server, we get 50. Well, there are three servers. They All they did was ban and they went to this server. That's just how it is. I mean, I think that's correct, but there are some rules that some leagues have. I mean, ESE would let them remake if they contacted an admin. A ping, they would always win the ping dispute, and it would go 50-50. I don't know if Ace has those rules. Ah, uh, collegiate. True. I mean, the server veto... That That's the weirdest thing about server vetoes to me on ESCA. It's like, if you have the server veto option that then goes to random if you can't agree, and then, like... If you if someone's ping is bad enough, they'll they'll always cave to that bad ping team. Well, I mean they're they're not even collect they're not even connecting in time anyway. So, my oh, they doubt ready. Well, they have to, or they didn't have to forfeit reset. Yeah, I mean the admins would let them do it though. <laughs> I know. It's just extra time, so we'll see how this goes. Okay, just play it, I guess. Um, IUPUI wins, gets to pick sides. I don't know why they're all killing themselves. Yeah, unless that's a good point. Uh, unless they're trying to, um end the round quicker, making it harder for people to connect, which is... I mean, I, I get like game theory. I don't know. That. I... See, Mike's not killing himself. I, I think he realizes that they're just going to call timeouts if if they don't join in time, so he's like, there's no point in jumping off. I don't know. We'll see. I just hope that this game starts and has five versus five. Alright. Chris has gone to a Karamba new gloves. He switched off his butterfly or mask. Does he still do the uh, the rent a skin stuff? No. No. Not to my knowledge. It's actual skins. Yeah, I is. know he used to do rent a skin stuff. Yeah. That like, Crombit is like 900 bucks right now. So. Well. This is circa 2015 ESEA DDoS era delays. Somebody bet on ASU and they're DDoSing the server. Maybe source to the uh, Shadow Daggers won't change your crosshair location. Invest That'd early cool. in Shadow Daggers right now. Yeah, that'd be insane stocks. All right. Say API win. So we'll see a switch here, and then we'll see a tech timeout from ASU. Yeah, they've got I think five minutes. Yeah. Face it. Yeah. I don't. Is it is it four thirty second tack and uh, a five minute? Four thirty seconds and a five minute. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've if you've had the stream on at all. Um to tell me if these audio levels are fine, but I haven't changed uh -huh. any settings since the last stream, but just wanted to check. Uh, I have not listened to you talk. I will go listen yeah. that right now so you have time. It, it should be fine. I turned it down a bit because I moved the mic actually into a better spot rather than where it sits idle when I'm playing games, but... Um, You're fine. Okay, yeah, cool, yeah. cool, thanks. You are big chillin'. <sighs> All right. 5v2. Yeah, this is a bit weird as well that, um... See, Max is tight. It is weird that, I mean, Noogie is saying that he connects better to Dallas with 50 ping, but his teammate's on 30 ping. And they go to the same college. So it's like... He's griefing his team. Mate, at least one teammate by going Dallas server. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a routing thing. ISP. All right. Um, well, ASU has the better part of probably three and a half minutes at this point to 
get their last two players in the server. All right, Zeke got that routing though. <laughs> well, if ASU gets five people in the surfer, Noogie is planning on throwing a smoke somewhere for the piston round strategy. I, I should have, I guess, I looked at this while we were waiting this whole time, but uh, are you aware of, uh, like, the ESCA team status of these ASU players? Like, did they play together? Or... Uh, outside of Facebook? Yeah. I have not checked, but I have time. Yeah, you got to probably two minutes at least. Yep. Wow. Oh, my gosh. It just popped up that two-minute notification. I am actually Kronos himself. Um, based uh, isn't even subscribed to ESCA. Nice. Uh, rank G. And everyone always puts their ESCA in their steams. I don't know why. Noogie only has his face it though, so. Um. Okay. Going to Noogie's Steam profile. I, I, I'm getting femboy vibes. Okay. Right. Four out of five. You know, at the end of the day, I think we can all just be jealous that people in Arizona didn't have to move their clocks ahead an hour. Yes. Well, this game might start at 4v5. Unless ASU is willing to burn their tax. This will truly be a spectacle. And it doesn't. Yeah, okay. 4v5 it is. Noogie CS with the utility for his team is going to waltz over towards the B bomb sites. The rest of his roster heading into the middle area. It looks like we're going to have a mid to B split here. This four versus five base very quickly into mid connector. CMX the first fight loses it. Gumboot left to pick up the pieces. Noogie CS with all the utility just goes down. And now Z trying to get the trade. Gumboot traps suicide, trying to make some space. He's not aware that his entire fight is from the mid area. Base collects EXT Frost with that trade. Now Straylock with the kit and two flashbangs and Frost Promise and a two versus two versus Z and Sad on this B bombsite retake. Sad takes the first fight. Player elbow is the misdirection. Straylock swinging, not aware of that player's location. Easy kill, no armor for Straylock. Now Frost Promise 1v2 collected very quickly after. So ASU, despite the man disadvantage, will win the pistol rounds and start off Vertigo with a lead. Yeah. Um... Just, just run it down, take fights. Essentially, it's 
gonna be ASU strat here in the early goings until they get their fifth. Um, let base, let their level tens go to work, find weak points. Or... Yeah, I mean that was just a case of of really giving up mid on the pistol. Um, you, you you really have to hit that connector shot and see my sister and make that happen there. B rush on the CT side eco round only goes the way of. One kill thus far, Shaylock hiding for his life is not going to make that happen. CMX quivering and shaking behind default. Looks like the T's are not going to take any chances. Throw some util as a part of their sight take here. Make sure these flashes are decent. CMX with just the USP might be able to collect sad. Nope, that's a nice shot from him. And 2-0 is the lead for ASU. Looks like the CTs are going to be pretty good for a buy here, though. Yep. First buy run. So we'll see uh, what kind of stuff uh, IPO I want to do on the A bomb site. Um, I assume CMX, well, CMX might go A here, um, because he's usually a mid player, but, yeah, right. um, it, it might, it might be E, or it's going to be, yeah, it, okay, so it is, it's going to be EXT, Frost, and Sherlock on the A bomb site. Yeah, EXT taking CMX over side. It's a pretty standard ramp take here for the IPI Jaguars. Looks like base is going to be challenging through that one way. It's hard to know how to react to this if you don't have experience. EXT knows he's going to smoke bottom side. That should stop any advances that base has. And Frost? EXT actually super aggressive. Mr. One Way Spot? Yeah, that, that's too low, yeah. I'm honestly surprised. I'm pretty sure base caught a glimpse of Frost Promise there and just didn't realize it. Uh, which good for the IPI Jaguars now in a five versus three I'm gonna have to keep remembering that every kill for IEPY is, is just super important in the early rounds because you go from already leading five versus four to five versus three and I think there's a pretty big difference in in those numbers CMX able to find one Frost Problem is able to find one and now for ASU it's uh I mean if you expect, I mean, you expected your fifth to be ready in at least 10 minutes. So at this point, tactically, if you're trying to maximize your chances of winning, these rounds should just be, like, cranked out as far and as long as possible. Like, nice Ooh. shot from Noogie there on the gum boot, but he's got a mountain to climb. CMX, the first contact on generator, goes down. Ooh. Nice flick shot. Yeah, Bomb yeah, being down mid, though. Oh, my it. God. Nice nade from Straylock. Nice nade. This guy's doing the most with 80 ping, man. Maybe he shouldn't be playing so much. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, no, but... I don't know. Okay, they're going to start burning tag. the timeouts, yeah. Maybe maybe they're burning timeouts now because he's maybe joined call. And yeah, that's probably it, yeah. Now, like, they feel like they have a time frame for when he will... Oh, no. Base just left. Okay. I... Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I mean, I, I honestly like the play from base there to go for that side smoke play and just go for kills because that's what you need right now if you're ASC. You just need to find opportunities where you're taking, you know, 40, 60, 50, 50 type fights and you're just trying to even the numbers and play deathmatch the best you can because if you end up trying to execute onto bomb sites, um, you know, every one for one trade that you have as a part of that is, is going to be disastrous because at some point you need somebody to double up. Looks like ASU is going to be going for a quick B play here. IEPY prepared for it. Two players on this B bomb site. Double nade early. No one's going to take any damage from that. I'm going to go ahead and wait out the early CT utility. Walking in now are the Sun Devils. Going to be throwing a one way smoke for a lurk up. Gunboot going to be calling that to his team. Flashbang comes in. Base already up danger. Flashbang should come in next for ASU, and Gumboot is a bit out of position. That flashbang is super solid. Gumboot completely caught off. Now a 4 versus 4 for ASU. Base caught clearing elbow CMX on an off angle. He's going to win that fight. The mollies and the nades are so much, though. Noogie's going to find CMX through the top of that smoke. Now with 3 versus 3 pulse bite, this is exactly what you want if you're the ASU Sun Devils. EXT completely destroyed by Noogie there. Instant HS on that peak. And now a familiar situation. Straylock and Frost Farm is left with the B bomb site to retake. Straylock finds the early kill, but. With such little utility left, it's going to be difficult. Now, Frost Promise 1 versus 2. Challenging two players now. Both players threatening to double swing, and indeed a perfectly fundamental double swing. Same time, no shot for Frost Promise. Yeah, so with the 5v4, I, and I think ASU is playing this correctly, I think they realize that IPY is playing normal Vertigo 3-1-1. They understand that they should just keep going B until IPY 
should honestly go to either a 2-2-1 or 2-1-2 setup because I don't think they'll be taking ramp much um, considering they're in a 5v4. And B is a pretty easy site and usually is one person site. So IEPUI needs to change up their their uh, the way they play the site because like I don't see them taking ramp on most gun rounds. They're taking ramp right now, but I think on most gun rounds they realize they should just go B. It is like a more a B or mid. Yeah, I mean anytime you can find an, uh, an area where there's only one person, even in a 5v5, that's going to be a pretty optimal mode, especially when you're a man down. Just putting it into an instantly instant post plant scenario is, is it's going to be your best bet. This is going to almost certainly be a Another clean round for the ASU Sun Devil is going to build up a bit of bank here. And if their fifth's going to show up, it should be pretty shortly. But right now, it doesn't look like they even need him. Oh, nice shot from Shaylock there, but going to need a lot more than that to win this retake. And the trades are coming in, but oh, Straylock, another 1D. Oh, if Frostbomb has won that fight, that would have been a one round, but with no kit... This is going to be an ASU Sun Devils round win. A nice try from Straylock. Two nice 1Ds, but not enough. 4-1 early for the ASU Sun Devils. Um, that was just a simple, like, they knew they were eco. Let's just run up, take A. Yeah, that's yeah. That's what they did. So we'll see what they, if they'll go back to B and mid here for these buy rounds. Um. I think they will. And indeed, they're heading that direction. Yeah, and I mean, IEPI has not necessarily made an adjustment yet. CMX is in that mid position. Looks like ASU is going to be throwing that same one way. CMX reacts to it by rotating in. This looks like... Oh, they're just going to go even quicker this round. No boost required. They are running straight in. CMX hits a headshot, but Blaker swinging out yep. to try to frag. Suicide goes down, and CMX gets traded as well. Three versus three post plant. Deja Vu and EXT this time not going to flank into retake from the same position. Gun swapped, utility swapped. EXT going to be throwing the retake flashbang. No one is generator yet, though. That flashbang might be a bit early. In, in fact, no one even capitalizes off of it. They're, they're not even blind anymore. Just now, the CTs are running in. EXT does not deploy his smoke for the suicide retake lineup. Gets the first kill, but still needs two to find, and there's no kit. Now going to... Yeah, he's trying to... Swing it out, throwing a smoke, and goes down. I guess he doesn't know the lineup to smoke uh, B stairs from from CT spawn. Yeah, um, like I said, I, ASU understands. Like they're just playing normal ramp. You just uh, IUPUI needs to just go to a two one two or a two two one and just throw a ramp smoke, swing it quickly, and then rotate two people over the B. Uh, just having someone to support Gumboot. Um, and you could easily yeah, I mean, have three people on the I mean, site. You can say that. I mean, CMX was there and got the opening kill that round on B. It was just a case of trade came in on CMX and Gumboot swung out wide, not realizing how exposed his danger was. I mean, that wasn't even a man D disadvantage problem. It was it was a it was a frag problem. Yeah. I mean, even in a five v five, you would consider that a, a bit of a B stack. So, yeah, that's that is not a good look for the IEPI Jaguars at all. EXT is going to collect a beagle kill on side. Continuing the aggression to pick up the AK, tosses it back to a higher health player. CT is now abandoning that look and headed towards the B bomb site where they have already picked Gumboot. Now coming up onto the site, CMX crouching behind default. He almost got to kill with the USP in the eco save round that he had earlier. He is still default. That flashbang was so good though. He finds one almost line up for him. Now EXT, he got the opener for IEPY. Can he close it out? One versus two. Nugi CS so close, EXT cannot hit the flick shot, and now 6-1 is the lead for ASU. Base just left again. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe I feel I can use this timeout to cook up something. I like the AWP from Gumboot here. It hasn't, like... It, why ASU has been able to get so much stuff done on B generally is the lack of information that IEPUI has had, and particularly Gumboot, about what the T's intentions are towards the bomb site. The first round, all they saw was that one-way smoke, and then from that came an instant flashbang and a pop with everyone on the bomb site. The second time, that one-way smoke was thrown, but there was no boost. It was just an instant push up the stairs from that point, and Gumboot didn't realize what was happening pretty much until CMX spotted those players up, and at that point, Gumboot... Um, swung out into a lot more players than he was expecting um 
So uh, the AWP should be an effort here to get an early information peak on the stairs. And in and and saying all of that, the T's have not been deploying utility to get into B. They've only been using it once they're actually in the B stairs. Um, one thing that's not great in this situation is that Gumboot's spawn is about the worst it can possibly be for that B stairs peak. So... You, if the T's use their best timing, or even a good timing, you're going to be later than you'd like to be for that peak. T, they burn that time out right as base joined, so I'll, I'll hold back on speculating a fifth's arrival. But, yeah, this is, um, this is ASU's pick, but at the same time, uh, any time you're losing... Oh! And yeah, okay, they've here. got five, but he only has $1,800. Is he... I mean, you could do body armor and drop him an AK here. It looks like that's what they're going to do, yeah. All right, so if you're IEPY, you just lost the first seven rounds, one to six. And now you will have to uh, beat five players, not four. So a lot of adversity here, we'll say, for the IEPY side. And it uh, looks like B and mid will be the... Location of interest. Gumbu! That's a that's a brave swing, but he'll make good on it. Noogie goes down to the AWP. Now, in the meantime... Really love that one in the fun. meantime, CMX dedicated his rotation to be there. Straylock goes down the rotation. Frost Promise swings out get that gets that trade. Four versus two. This is looking good for the Jaguars for the first time in a long time. IEPY. Just need a couple more kills to make this round. Good Gumbu with the AWP gets two and based. Takes... A swing through a Molotov and will die, I think, what, exclusively to it. So, IEPY has board. won the same amount of rounds uh, in a 5v4 than a 5v5 at 1. Um, but, yeah, Gumboot finally getting the op in play, uh, and they decided to do an aggro uh, double stairs peak, which is really a, a smart smart play there. Um, and then the rotations were good on the mid players. Yeah, yeah. I, I like ASU's mid lurks there knowing that they have that space and, and trying to make a fast play there but IEPY makes those trades Frost Promise good on the trade there okay utility being thrown up very quickly up the ramp are the ASU Sun Devils Frost Promise completely caught off guard goes down trades going every which way currently favoring the Jaguars 4-2 to two. and I think once again we are, we're looking at a round win for the IEPY side so strangely enough five players seem to be a disadvantage right now for, for ASU uh the bomb is dropped up at Crane, so there's there's no uh, there's no misdirection available here for ASU. Oh, actually, it's below this ledge. I don't know if IEPY actually sees this bomb. I don't know if it matters though. CMX up on the ledge is gonna get pre-fired. Gonna have to escape with his life. EXT almost goes down, but makes good on that kill, and Strelok will finish off. How do you think? How do you think you say that guy's name? Which one? The one who just joined. Is, is the one an I? Is it like Yifani or Yifan? Yifin. Yifin. Yifin? Go with Yifin. Yifin. Yifin or Yifin. I prefer. I don't know. I don't know what I prefer actually. Anyway, he's over too. So, low econ, but not an immediate impact for ASU. Looks like uh, a bit of a mixed buy. ASU should be good to buy next round, but the only AK is on Noogie. I You're think right uh, they've, they're have they definitely showing a preference towards this B-bomb side. Based is, I think, crashed or something again. Okay, he's back. Quick lurks onto the B site. It's going to be a boost here for ASU. With uh, Sad hopping up with the Desert Eagle. Gumbo on the AWP. Gonna spot that out. A little bit awkward exchange there. Gumboot lucky to be alive. Oh, they're quickly actually approaching the bomb site now. Gumboot not ready for it, but does hit the flick shot. Now swinging again. Collects Z. Almost collects Sad, but almost also collects a Desert Eagle bullet to the temple. Meanwhile, EXT gonna catch on Noogie on a lurk. And Yiffen, last player alive, goes down to the left eye peak disadvantage. IPUI, they're recovering quite well here. Expected by coming in from ASU. Looks like Nugi has sacrificed a bit from... Yeah, that AK last round is going to cost him an AK this round. Goes instead with Galil Utility. 
So, early windows broken. Going to be throwing the close generator of smoke for a B-Rush and IUPUI. They're in good position to stop this. CMX very quickly onto the B-Stairs. So much noise was made from those nades. I don't think ASU knows how deep CMX is into this area. Gumboot, misdirection. The AWP finds one. CMX only finds one and a half. Now Gumboot going to make a decision to back up. Mollies and Flash is still being thrown. A lot of pressure, but Gumboot is not phased. He legs Yiffen. Now there's two players on the ASU side on one HP. Gumboot having a great round. Collects Nuki as well. This AWP has been such a difference for the Jaguars. Sad last player alive. He's one shot away from death, and Gumboot wants to make that happen. He will. A triple kill for him in that round, and another good call from the IPUI side to continue to put aggression towards that B-Stairs area. Yeah. Maybe they, maybe maybe ASU should go back to the 5v4. Um... Yeah, More I guess so, man. <laughs> uh, just yeah, they just keep going for the B takes, and now now that Gumboot has the op, um, it's a lot harder on top of the consistent aggro plays because now even with the five IPI realizes they're not really trying to contest ramp. We don't need to put that much pressure into taking it. ASU um, loves their fast plays. This is gonna be a fast mid play. That nade does so much damage from CMX, completely destroys the ASU Sun Devils push, and now. Quickly into CT spawn. CMX should hear this. The comms are going to be loud, but he gets rolled by that Tech-9. Now, Gumboot on an AWP. How much can he even do from this close range? He gets the first with a Deagle, though. He actually one digs the second and quick scopes Noogie from Generator. A 4K for Gumboot on the round and prevents a disaster. Yeah, that was looking really good for ASU, but Gumboot shuts it down. He needed to make some clutch shots, and indeed he did. That op paving, paying dividends. Um... ASU almost had them there, but 6-6 six, six now. We're going to a buy round. I probably will see ASU try to take ramp. I think that the ramp play will probably be tested here. I have a hard time. I mean, they'll still go B after what's out, and then D the side smoke. Yeah. This is more of a default-esque round. Now, I was going to mention this in the last freeze time, but it's good to see Gumboot not straying away from his aggressive kind of nature with the AWP after having some tough rounds to start the game. And could like every round that he's, he's played thus far has been re peak central, and he is benefited from it. Now, EXT from side goes down. Now, Frost Promise, he's she's just caught on an island and she goes down. CMX also on the midler goes down to base. And it's an H HS there. And now, Straylock, man, he's been good with the HEs today, but that's gonna this round is gonna require a lot more than an HE kill, especially with this midler cutting off Gumboot's rotation. Gumboot will find it, but it costs him the large majority of his health. Two versus three. Flashbangs thrown, smokes thrown, and dissipated. Sad planning, a bit exposed to the Straylock's lurk, but there goes Gumboot, the AWP on Z, on Sandbags. Straylock sees the tip of his head. I don't know if he's realized it. Nice try from him. Two kills on the round, but it's not going to be enough. ASU stops the bleeding and is won their first round with five players in the server. Yep. And we'll see attack. We'll see yeah. attack. I, I think here. I don't want to make any, you know, kind of predictions in this area all that much. But my prediction here is that Straylock saw what happened ramp last round and wants to just make sure that IEPUI has their ducks in the, ducks in a row for next round. Because Frost Promise kind of made the the kind of nuanced, easy to make mistake on Vertigo A ramp where you kind of get caught in no man's land, whether you're sandbags or you're exposed to a sand, uh, the, the second ramp sandbags, you know, headshot angle. There are a lot of angles that you can get on and you're just going to get quad. Like there are yeah. like four different places you can get peeked from. And, yeah, and she got stuck there. And she kind of got into that position because I don't know if she thought she felt the need to trade EXT because during that, when the ramp smoke was in, um, Sad pushed up on the left side of the smoke, uh, like pushed up and like oh, EXT okay. was That's just how that EXT, happened? EXT I, th I thought he got killed from a gap. No, yeah, no, EXT was just swinging and spraying into nothing, and he just tapped him. Uh, he was just kind of, like, taking a bad fight, honestly, because he couldn't see him. Despite oh. the success on A, ASU is going back to their B-site ways. One-way smoke being thrown. This has been quite threatening for IEPI in the past. And there are three players towards this B-bomb site. Now, oh! The one-way is good. Gumboot goes down. Now CMX from Generator. How much can he do? Does he decide to give up the side or is he fighting? He's got a fight and he swings at the three players crouched on his angle. Yiffen now with the mid lurk is also a danger. Straylock looks away at the exact moment Yiffen peeks. And a two versus five. You have to consider saving here. EXT should have known that that guy was mid from Straylock's call. But he acts completely oblivious to the possibility. And he goes down with his knife out. Yeah, I don't know if that was a miscom there. But ASU just... Bullies are waiting to the B bombs again with their one-way smoke. I'm, 
I'm I'm honestly shocked they went back to that be well, but it worked out for them. Um, one I think one of the most tilting things in CS, like for me, is especially is that is a Vertigo mid lurk man. Like those those yeah, are so it could be devious. Those are so tilt. They can be so tilt. There's like you're holding it so long and they just yeah. Oh. Well, wow, both oppers missed their shot there. Shout out, uh, shout out, GI Jonas, one of the best mid lurkers in the game. You know, quickly, yep, Noog, he actually got a kill off that smoke that time. We saw that early in the game, and he goes back to it. He gets the kill. Boost comes in on mid. Gumboot caught out by it. Sherlock trying to spray the smoke. Doesn't do enough damage, and not saving the gun last round cost Frost Promise a rifle. This round, the low HP on Noogie will be enough to double body shot with a 5-7, but a lot more kills required. Pinching from mid. Nice flick headshot onto base. Two versus three now. CMX making a slow rotation. Frost Promise finally traded. No kid on CMX, but has to go for it. And this is not an easy bomb site to retake without a kit and without a smoke. So he is close high, close sight looking elevator. CMX is going to get a free kill there. Yiffen takes a swing, but CMX is not ready for SAD's side peak. And ASU, they recover. They round up the half with three straight rounds, and it's going to be a 9-6 to six lead for them heading into the second half of their map pick. Yeah. Uh, if you're FUI, I mean, you're kind of upset with how the scoreline went, considering you were down 6-1 in a 5v4. But, I mean, they were able to bring it somewhat back. Um, IPY has had... Success on their T sides in Vertigo in the past, so we'll see. Yeah, we'll I see mean, what they cook up at here. the very least, you know, it wasn't a disaster, which is what it was looking like. So, I think you can keep your head up with that. A little bit not optimal to have Sherlock on the bomb here. There is a B stack from ASU ready to absorb this B rush, and it is currently being absorbed quite well. All the kills going the way of ASU thus far, but Gumboot looking to change that will not be able to. And that is not the way you want to start off your T-side half after losing the first. CMX is going to be taking a bit of a Big Daddy A buy. He is still on the server with us spiritually. Yeah, looks like, yeah, CMX is really the only true danger in this round for the ASU side. Even saying that, I think uh, it's not going to be too dangerous, especially seeing as CMX doesn't have armor here, and these MP9s are such a threat. Good anti-flash. Noogie runs through and goes down, so that is one weapon collected. Not the most valuable available, but they'll take it. CMX with a deagle. <sighs> narrowly missing those headshots. Also narrowly missing the bullets he's receiving, but looks like if you guys luck has ran out in this eco... XT going to go down. Dual bread is at that range or not going to be not going to be profitable. And uh, ASU give themselves a five round buffer before the gun round start. And now we'll start to see how IEPY are going to distribute their T side default. I would assume we're going to see a lot of, you know, out of spawn calls. Very similar maybe to how ASU conducted their T side. Maybe a bit slower in nature than ASU's pack counter strike that typically was executing by, you know, 20 seconds, 30 seconds from the end of the round. Four ramp start here for IEPY. Flash is thrown from Gumboot. Quickly upside goes Straylock and EXT. Doesn't look like Doogie's interested in challenging the ramp with that scout, but he is holding side. Meanwhile, Z has taken the map control towards the B-bomb site. Ramp completely under control of the IEPY Jaguars. A little bit of fumbling from the T-side EXT. 2 HP after getting mollied and naded. Straylock, though, fighting through the smokes. He's going to find that kill. Sad. Going to phase the smoke next to Gumbo. He's actually going to run through. Gumbo completely catching that out. EXT going to trade. Uh, not even trade. A free kill onto Noogie through the smoke. And now it's all down to Yiffen on the retake. Close. Now just finally getting a rotation from Z. He was all the way B-stairs. Retake smoke's being thrown for side. Retake nade, I should say. He's actually going to conserve his smoke. That smoke did not go over the default box, so the bomb is not smoked, and this is unwinnable for the ASU side. Straylock and CMX collect the final two Sun Devils, and they are going to win a pretty convincing T-side first gun round. Yeah. Um, 
That was just a simple, clean, pretty, pretty clean ramp take. Uh, ASU also was still on a couple bonus guns, like one, like new geese, this one with a scout, had a scout, and MP9. And IPY played that, played that correctly. Solid ramp take. Um, I guess this is a weird round. Everyone forced, but sad on the ASU side, so. Yeah. I don't know what's going on there. Yiffen playing side with his rifle, the other rifle on Z, playing this double stack off angle. CMX, I think, just got, like, dinked through the wall or something. He's down to 13 HP. Meanwhile, mid boost coming in, and there is a mid play from the Jaguars here. Kabut clearing for the first angles of the boost, but Sad's on the, the off angle. Oh, gun spotted, and frag found. Mid smoke being thrown, and... The CTs are prepared for this play, but on pistols will it be enough? It's a good start. Amazing start. Three kills unanswered right now, and CMX on 13 health is still alive. Straylock answering back. Only finds two, though. Now CMX on 13 health with a one versus two. Yiffen very aggressively swinging, and it's going to work. Wide swings past CMX's first angle, and CMX cannot recover. ASU immediately answer back after losing such a convincing first round. Yeah, they win the they win the eco. They just right places, right right uh, right spots with the pistols, and then uh, a good suicide swing by I think I think it was base. I didn't see. Uh, got two on a timing swing as they were running up B, and every, yeah. all all the all the trades went ASU's way. It just it it seemed like IEPY just didn't put enough ramp there, and the CTs were just able to completely gamble stack the men B sites. Another big. Ramp take for the IEPY Jaguars. Base challenging only is able to get one. Utility puts a stop to the rest of the push, but trade still goes the way of the T side. One for one. Frost Promise goes down to Nugi. Yiffen gonna trade and find EXT. Now Straylock all alone. All of his teammates falling around him, and he's only got 12 HP himself. Gumboot jumping up, trying to find anything. Flank comes in. Nice flick shot onto Sad. Now quickly abandoning that A site. Just get around the corner in time. Nugi trying to chase. Couldn't chase fast enough. The only player to stop this B push right now is Z. This is not an easy off angle to clear, especially if the Molly comes in. That flash is a bit early to blind him on this take. Straylock looking the wrong way and nice flick onto Gumboot. Insta headshot there for Z and ASU. Three rounds away from winning their own map pick. Yeah. Looking more clinical now from ASU. Now they have five on the server too. Um, Bree aggressing ramp there to get those kills and yeah. Yiffen Yiffen has only played since round eight and already has more kills than three players in IEPY. Yeah. So that's not a good stat. Looks like it's going to be a quick ramp take for IEPY. Going to be pretty standard utility from ASU as well. Gumbu going to be running through smokes full blind, and uh, it's not going to work out for him right now, IEPY. Mainly because of CMX's entry on side has been able to take this ramp area, so... Despite their low buy, this is looking like a very winnable round for the IEPY Jaguar. Straylock actually gets off the bomb site as well, pretty uncontested. Now, there is no utility on the T side, and there's plenty of utility on the CC side for this retake. Also a kit on Z. I'll walk up. Where do they deploy these smoke grenades? I'm surprised they haven't deployed one on the bomb yet. That side smoke lands. Z going to be taking fights. Ramp choosing not to smoke the bomb. Instead, with the aggressive route works until CMX gets a double headshot spray down. He gets four in the round, all headshots. And IEPY, they have a bit of life, thanks to CMX. Yeah, a bit of life. CMX was also quiet. Only had 11 kills uh, before that 4K. Um, take the good time to come alive as uh, the game was could have been out of reach there. Or was getting close to feeling out of reach there. Um, Would have been fourteen seven though, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this this forces ASU to half by save here. A potential another chance to get one round closer to cutting the deficit. Yeah, I mean IEPY seems to think that ramp is ramp is the way to go, and the, the results currently bear that out as well. CMX very quickly upside, no respect at all. There is a sandbags lurk. He's gonna choose to activate early, there then nades can push him out, but CMX. Insta HS. That player, Frost Promise, finds an entry onto the default player. Quickly jumping up his Noogie. AXT gonna find that. And now this is looking like a pretty easy run for IEPY from here. 
EXT gonna plant. Should be enough defense to protect EXT here. Sherlock spraying down long range, and CMAX's nade will collect base. So, four rounds is the deficit. ASU, we haven't... I mean, I was about to suggest, you know, maybe an off gets brought out on the CT side, but the economy is still not very good. Yeah, it looks like another half by here is in the cards. Um, potential AWP pick up in the next round. So we'll see. Yeah, how it looks like. Goes. I mean, Sad and and Yiffen didn't even purchase into this round at all, and they have a lot of money. So you've got to imagine that there's got to be some AWP. Actually, Sad's just straight up AFK. <laughs> yeah, ramp stack. Meanwhile, the T side, all at B. Um, it's really going to be screaming at his team to just walk up onto B at this point. And there is no one to stop this push. The bomb is uh, a bit late, but it really shouldn't matter. Molotovs and smokes being thrown. Sad times out. Arizona internet is truly ASU's worst enemy in this game. How many kills can they cause chaos? They are able to actually open up this bomb site. A man advantage for ASU at this point. Gumbu gonna try to come in and save the day, but Frost Promise and Gumbu go down, and IAPUI lose that round? Wow. That was a 4v5 versus at best 5 sevens with the yeah. bomb site. With the bomb site. What? That, that is not a round IAPUI should be losing, and yet that just happened. Oh my. Hey, everything just seems. I literally looked away. I, I thought it was like, I was like, I just saw Tab to check something, and you just said they lost the round. I, I, I'm i actually shocked about that. I saw CMX throwing Khan util and stuff. Yeah, I was like, okay, no, that util was thrown. I think there were two IEPI players close gen that both lost their fights. I think CMX found one, and then Gumbu running up from flank coverage couldn't find one in a panic spray, and Frost Promise can't find the 1v3. So ASU have just found an amazing round to win because their economy is... Is, is boosted quite heavily from that. The nade is pretty solid on that push, and with ramp control, IAPUI, they've, they've been in this position before, and they've won most rounds from here. But ASU knows that and still has three players towards this bomb site. That nade just puts your light down to f 23 HP. That is a counter nade for, specifically for the... Oh my god, Sherlock almost just got killed from a team nade. Now he's just going to try to find entries, and he won't be able to. One body shot is enough, and now the push is in from the CTs, completely pinching the ramp. That just seems like a lot of miscommunication on the IPI side. It looked like they were fumbling around trying to figure out who was smoking left. Sherlock trying to smoke left gets counternated, and it is uh, it is looking grim for the IPI Jaguars on this first map of Vertigo. Yeah, I think I, I think Vives got killed after that eco. Um yeah, I mean that is that is a vibe killer. That is a that is a vibe killer round if I've ever seen one. Oh my god, they didn't shoot Sherlock's window out correctly, so the the smoke is late on B. It doesn't look like they had any interest in hitting B fast anyway, but whatever whatever place that smoke had in the strategy was quite delayed. Meanwhile, three players over towards this mid B area. Now four rotating in. Z goes down, so good entry from EXT, but there are plenty of players to absorb this mid to B play. Based running and gunning, he finds Gumboot. EXT finds the trade, but instantly he's traded himself. Ross Promise rotating in. There is a player stuck. Default CMX, good headshot there. IPY 3 versus 1, but we have seen disgusting throws on this B bomb site. CMX not going to let it happen. Finds Noogie on the flank. And IEPY showing some life. Still need 5 rounds straight. To make this comeback happen. Yep. Five rounds of Force OT. Um, but if you're... It's a good start. Um, even with the, the late bead nades, a solid, uh, solid job of getting entries and kills. 15-10. If they can win this round, ASU will be broke. Although, that being said, uh, apparently them being broke is not mean <laughs> a better chance of winning the round. So uh, Max is going to take B at a pretty low... Uh, Low utility manner, just a flashbang. Forces the CTs off. A site ramp take a bit slower. I shouldn't say a bit slower, a lot slower than it typically has been. Forfeiting the ramp area to the CTs to start this one. 
base gonna be lining up a re-smoke for side. Or sorry, it's, it's the sandbags one way. And uh, this typically will freeze the T side bottom ramp until the smoke fades because of how strong the position is. Spam is good enough for EXT to make some room though. A good flashbang here could be a difference and Gumboot looks like he might have one in his hand. Oh, this is so dangerous for the CTs. That flash comes in full blinds base. There's only EXT though and he goes sandbags and gets killed. There's no one else to scale, and those nades are going to slow down the push. Strelok actually lines up two and into HS's both. He gets a third through the smoke onto Z. Quickly onto the bomb site are the Jaguars. Planting the bomb is Strelok. And looking to pick up the pieces are ASU. They can't believe what just happened. Opening kill goes their way, and then Strelok, no respect, runs up and triple kills. Looks like Sad and Yiffen want to go for this. They do have a smoke, but no kit. They're going to bail out and save. So IEPY onto 11, not giving up. Wow. That that is that is crazy. That is a huge round from Trelock. I I honestly look the 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 take was very messy. Like uh, Gumbu missed his right side smoke and because Trelock was blocking it, but while Trelock blocked it, he got three kills, so it didn't even matter. Um, 15-11 now. Yeah, I mean, just imagine what world we're in if IEPY doesn't lose the B site retake. ASU has presumably two less rounds, and IEPY has two more, so it's 13 13. Regardless, right now, the T side is being. They're finding holes in what is, you know, just a team that. Is gonna have them if that you know if you don't play a ton of Counter Strike together, you're you're not gonna know what people how how people react to each situation and go. But he's gonna find the opening pick towards B, immediately bail out of that area, and head towards the A ramp. A lot of noise was made in that rotation, and it looks like, oh, it, it felt like base wanted to gamble and rotate off B there for a second, and he actually is going to now. Flashbang in is not good onto CMX and Nugi goes down. Five versus three, all hands on deck for ASU towards this A bomb site. CMX on sandbag should be able to catch out based in certain situations over that smoke. Sad is making a bit of a grub play here in default. He is not able to find Straylock though. The grub lord himself will not be found that way, but Yiffen, he is side and just missed every spray through the smoke onto the bomb carrier. That is unlucky. Straylock relentlessly chasing. He knows that this is likely going to be a save from base on the AWP. And they are hunting. Only on 14 HP, any anything is gonna gonna collect base here. I feel like quickly closing in on the location. Nice flick shot onto CMX. Cannot find Straylock. Double kill for him and the bomb plant. Key entries. He's doing a lot for the Jaguars right now, keeping the stream alive. 12 to 15. ASU on another save. I think they can start to believe at this point. But as we've learned, you can never be too too careful against pistols. Mid stack coming out from the Sun Devils. Flash comes in. Gumbu gonna be blind. Cross promise. Running and gunning the M4. Double headshot. What was that by a lottery ticket? ASU is going to be like probably just laughing after that. Frost promise. Trying to find the triple and will once again running. Based only able to find one headshot. Triple kill for Frost Promise on the anti eco. I wish my M4A4 did that. <laughs> Got a lot to learn. And that's my Frost Promise to you, Mr. Button. <laughs> the flowchart does not lie. Does the flowchart allow for me to pick ramp? All right. Pretty aggressive mid play here from Sad. Doesn't look like he's gonna try to pursue any horseshoe aggression though. If it, I grow B as well. So who is close base? Base is pushed up. Yeah, Frost Promise got sprayed down quite a bit there from top ramp. Molly goes in. That is it not burning base right now. I wonder how no, much missed. CMX. Oh, he's gonna clear it. Instant he, HS. He still gets it. 
Man advantage for the Jaguars. Been in this situation a lot. Trying to pursue ramp control. This time they're gonna actually bail out of it. If they're gonna flash re-peak. Straylock, he's too good. He finds the kill. Z finds Gumboot on that A lurk for the AWP. Frost Promise exiting now. Is the flank guardian? Nice shot on Anugi. Good crosshair placement. Now Sad jumping up onto Sandbags. Gonna find a kill and escape with the CMX. Gonna feel robbed from that. And a player disconnects. That's sad. Uh, one versus three now for Z. Frost Promise exposing herself and missing the utility. Z has got to wonder what the heck that peak just was. I mean, you save here. If you're Z, you save here. Unless you really think you can win it. He doesn't see his head. I guess he, he doesn't. Oh, <laughs> so just jumps up for the info though. AC gonna win that fight. Okay, fourteen to fifteen against saving players. They cannot call a timeout. We can't call a timeout if he doesn't join. It'll be a five v four. So. Yeah, I mean, if the internet went down, it's not just like a quick restart. Then this is this is gonna be a four versus five. Wow. All right. Well, if you're IEPY, you have been given a golden opportunity to win this round and put this into overtime. How will they conduct? Oh, Yiffen misses his Molotov towards B. I don't think we've seen Z on this sandbag's off angle yet. But with how IEPY has been defaulting, I kind of doubt that it'll be, it'll matter. Nade is a bit low there, I think. Only tags up CTs bit. T-side very willing to let the CTs peek into them this round. Noogie gonna lurk down into close side. He is just super aggressive and CMX, that's a free kill. At that range the MP9 is just never gonna beat the AK. I think IEPY have decided they just want to crawl up ramp with five. It's kind of hard to lose in that environment. Looks like ASU has made a similar conclusion. Gonna be stacking this A bomb site. If the execute is good from IEPUI, it should be a fairly simple execution. We should be headed over time. Smokes go in. You're fine. Boosting on top of this shit. ASU's gonna be boosting on top of drywall. Boosting on top of that shit. <laughs> Flashes, mollies, stag of utility. All this util that IEPUI didn't have to use to take map control is being used to perpetuate this post plant. Five versus three. No smokes, no kit. This is impossible to throw. Straylock finds the first on the Yiffen. Z and based. Likely a forfeited, and they're just looking towards overtime at this point. Yiffen goes down. Z finds one almost spray transfers onto Gumboot, but we'll finally collect. The bomb is already 10 seconds, and we are going to overtime. Yeah. I cannot believe it. <laughs> Overtime! 5v4. Dude, IEPY pulled this back after losing a 4 versus 5 post plant to 5 sevens. It's true. That is impressive in and of itself. And, I mean, the worst scoreline we saw was what? I mean, it was probably like four scorelines, like 14 8 maybe? I mean, I don't know. Double op setup being brought out by ASU. Looks like IEPI is not going to deviate too far from their standard default. Gumboot going to be using his spawn to take an op peak. Once again, both players miss their shots. Now Gumboot, he's not going to shy away. CMX though, he'll go down. Now Gumboot, oh, lucky to be alive. Yiffen going to miss the shot. Aiming at the backpack. Gumboot flashed, peaks. Once again, escaping. Oh, an amazing shot from Frost Promise. Entries the op. One tap. Gumboot. Taking that space. Misses another shot on Anugi. He's got to reload that weapon at this point. But that, how far IEPO was up that B stairs area has forced rotations from ASU onto B. And right now, IEPI is currently walking their way towards a ramp. Z rotating in himself towards A. So it looks like we're going to see a 5 versus 2. 
plenty of utility to create smoke walls onto this bomb site. Plenty of utility to molly out, jump up. This should be pretty, pretty seamless of an execute. My API once again, drywall boost coming in. And bomb going down, four versus two. The issue is, is equipped with a kit this round. So you're taking one, a lot one, of utility two. damage. That is a good flashbang, but no one to capitalize. EXT goes down side, Gumboot trading that back out of the self-boost player based. Not gonna hang out too much longer on Drywall, misses the shot on Sandbags. Frost Promise coming up to trade. She wins the fight and Gumboot finds Noogie. So a good start to overtime for the IEPY side. Yep. With the caveat that it's a five versus four. <laughs> it's still a five v four, yeah. Man, this ASU team needs to needs to tell their college to get uh, some better internet. Early pick from Gumboot goes. Finally his way on that ramp pick. Z gonna make a lurk through mid, but it's gonna be hard to make an impact with how fast IEPY might get out of this B-bomb site. Molly from Noogie will stall that push, so maybe this flank does come into effect. The bomb is rotating back away from B and will run straight into Z here. Frost Promise goes down, AK collected. Will they expect the ramp like not at all? Completely pancakes. Two players on each side. Four versus two now. EXT going to scale up the ramp, and there is literally no one on this A-bomb site to absorb this push for ASU. EXT ambitiously on top default. Going to spot out base. Dinked up, but still lives. And now, Nuki, I mean, you have to debate whether you save this. Yiffin on $50. I guess if you're 4v5 and you're probably tilted that you're on overtime, you, maybe you don't. But, okay, he's going to back out. Tough this scene. Is... Tough scene for ASU. And Sad's back, though. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Could be a good last round here. Um, not 5v4. Oh my god, he almost jumped off. Nugi almost <laughs> straight off the map, dude. No, nah, never in danger. Never in danger. Uh, well, they're hunting. They might make it to him. They'll definitely make it to him in time. Let's see if like, he gets cleared. Oh, definitely. Oh, and goes down. the shot. Yeah, that's, uh, so Sad actually came in with overtime money, so he can buy up everybody. God's plan here in CT spawn. Gumboot doesn't have the same B spawn he's had, so yeah, he's, he's gonna switch it up and head mid with the AWP. There was mid aggression last round, so I'm not too surprised to see this. Wow, Strelok. He's going to take the reins towards B and head entry, but trade comes in from danger. Based up on the one-way smoke on Rain Balcony. Good flash from EXT, but I think he also blended CMX with that one. Based. He knows CMX is in that smoke. Wow. CMX is going to find it. 1 HP. 4 versus 3. And Yiffen leaves B. And Gumboot finds him. So four versus two once again for IEPY. Sad makes it a two versus three. Rotates back into elevator, but they are both on the wrong side of the map. IEPY looking to make this a sweep. One post plant away. Smokes on both Frost Promise and EXT. Neither have used them yet. EXT now going to deploy it for that CT lineup and the mid connector lineup. They might not land in time. Frost Promise was found. Yeah, the, the smokes and the mollies are just landing too late. EXT, one versus two. Finds the first headshot. Both players very low on HP here. Noogie walking up close. EXT spotting him out, but can't hit the shots. And Noogie CS is going to make one round happen for the CT side. Yeah, that's a that's a huge one round to get. Um, if you're AFC, ASU. They had a pretty decent uh, T side. So Having five players on the server, uh, a nice 3v2 retake there. Um... Honestly, the post pants were, were great for my IPY. Frost had a 
was holding mid, but she got. I'm, I'm a bit surprised that the EXT didn't choose to just like immediately throw his smoke on one of the sides of generator and Molly the other, or like yeah. deeper CT because by the time he's throwing those lineups, they're already passed and killing CMX and the EXT can't trade. So. IPI finally back onto the CT side, a side where they lost one to six and then came back to six to six and then lost nine to six. So mixed results for sure on that side. EXT gonna be flashed through the smoke. Z on a one way is gonna spot out. Actually, multiple players I'm spotting white. out. And Frost Promise wide swings. The one way smoke is is not even there. She just swings and takes that fight. It's sprayed down for it. CMX is gonna find Yiffen on a nice headshot, but. The bomb side is lost. Full retake mode now for the Jaguars. Wow. Actually, Gumbo's gonna drop the bomb. Why were they peeking before their left right smokes? They don't even have okay, now they're just finally coming in. Did they even have a right side smoke? This is overtime. How did they not have the utility? Noogie going in, but Straylock, he is willing to fly through the smoke. He finds the bomb. But not before it's planted. Based. Best player for ASU. Statistically cannot win the clutch. Oh, wow. That I'm that was a 5v3 retake. Uh, I am amazing. so stunned. The ASU just did not wait for their wall smokes. Yeah, they wait for their wall there. IPI gonna make them think about it, I guess. I don't know. Um, that was the same kind of situation IUPI called a timeout in the first half where it seemed like the ramp players just kind of died and then Sherlock called the timeout. And the same thing happened here. Yeah, I mean, ASU was, I mean, they got both entries on A with like 20 HP loss total. And then CMX finds a kill. Gumboot finds a kill. Sherlock, nice flashbang play through. No one covering that at all for ASU. And then the post plant falls apart from there. 18 to 16. IEPU has two match points to steal ASU's map pick in what has been an absolute odyssey of a single map of Counter-Strike. We started with ASU going up 6-1 to one in a 4 versus 5, then losing 5 rounds straight in a 5 versus 5, only to win the half 9-6. to six. EXT AFK for the IEPUI Jaguars. Maybe that's why the timeout was called. Frost Promise forgets Maybe. to buy. Gets back in time to get armor and a rifle, okay? It's not a disaster, but the ramp hold is just completely absent from IEPUI. They just, just full retake A. And the, the I mean, everyone on IEPUI has rotated the A bomb site. They seem to fully know what's going on here. T side. No right side smoke? Or left, left I mean. Okay, just now. Yep, they just now throw it. You okay. see, looks like he's going to get flashed through here. Yep, will. Find sad. Flash from side. Nice anti flash. Cannot double up, though. Everyone's going through the smokes, it seems. Yiffen finds two. And Z is going to find an upgun to CMX. Frost Promise will find Yiffen, but gets straight. This this is one of the weirdest games of... <laughs> Peak collision CS. 5v4, one this way, is why you one watch. the other. Someone forgets to buy. It all leads to a crazy A, a retake. And ASU don't even understand what happened that round. Uh, regardless, win it. And uh, we're one round away from double over time. We'll see what happens here. Everyone is moving right now, though, so we'll have a normal <laughs> round of CSS round for sure. Um, okay, well, I mean, ASU clearly has the intention of going B here, but there was no Abyssal smokes. Gumbu quick on the AWP, finds Z. But will he be able to defend from the rest? He will. Sad goes down, and Gumbu, he is looking to take his team over the line. He did this so many times with the AWP and regulation. The mollies and the flashes are good, though. He transfers to second. Wow, Nugi. Quick headshot on the Gumbu there. Now the rotations are coming in. CMX actually can't find one. It's a 3 versus 3 post plant. The bomb, however, has been left outside B. Do you pivot at this point to the A bomb site? They're not going to. They're going to go back B with the bomb. Sherlock stepping up, finding the gap. Only finds one. Frost Promise and EXT just took so much damage from utility. Frost Promise making the swing. EXT a little bit behind. And EXT is shooting between both CTs. We're going to double overtime. <laughs> what? Gumbo does what he can. Gets to kind of get stuck in no man's land because he gets mollied off. CMX Gumbo could not have played that run better, dude. He no, gets no, the no, first no, two. No, no, I, I'm I, not saying you're wrong, but like I'm just I just want to compliment him because he's yeah. full blind and transfers to double stack and gives his team like a full four seconds extra to rotate yeah. before he dies. Yeah. He just um the flash is good, Nugu is quick on the headshot. But what I was gonna say is CMX is just 
between like in no man's land not like jiggling jen he just tries to take a fight against three t's while his team's rotating which essentially gives him the bomb site and then jay like gets flash through is a good play and then yeah i mean still i guess one goes down man. like frost promise like i think frost promise thought ext was going to swing with her a lot faster than ext did oh the one way ext's in front of it and z finds that kill now frost promise looking to make amends finds a double that is a weird lineup i don't know if i've ever seen that now three versus three once again just 20 seconds into the round, we find ourselves here. This game has been so chaotic. Base disconnects. <laughs> Thankfully, after he died. Smoke goes in for sight, but it's only one, and there's no smokes remaining for the T side. IEPI will have opportunities to find kills. Wallbang's coming in. CMX going to hear that bomb plant. Maybe escaping just as the smoke dissipates. IEPY, they have plenty of utility to make this happen. And kits, that flashbang. It's not good to find blind players, but Nugi makes good on it anyway. Gumboot finds the first. He's going to need a 3k for his team. Smoke going to be thrown. Sad is not even going to wait. They're just going to double swing and they win. ASU, after being down 18 to 16, are now winning in double overtime. This game is chaos. Um... <laughs> Definitely, definitely with one HP, just making the play, like, hear the smoke deploy. Okay, they don't expect a swing, so that's a double swing there. Um, ASU now takes the lead, 18-19. Um, the ramp takes have been working really well. Uh, EXT has been picked a lot side, uh, putting the team in weird positions. Yeah, it looks like it's a bit of a switch up here. Only putting two aggro... Wow. The ramp take once again just completely evaporates the defense. EXT and Frost Thomas instantly go down. Strelok gets two on the trade. Just a vital play from Strelok to keep this round in contention for the Jaguars. Now the IEPY side are wondering if they panic rotated too fast. However, Gumboot is back in time. Strelok picked on a play. Gumboot. So good from default this game with the AWP. Now the bomb rotating back. Z all the way up onto the A bomb site. CMX. Might be the first point of contact here. Gumboot going to get aggressive B. He's actually going to flank. I don't think we've seen a single A retake from the IPO Jaguars that have included a flank yet. So this might be what the Jaguars need. However, what they don't know is how pushed forward Z is into their spawn. That's not going to be easy to account for. CMX seems to have an inkling that that's a possibility. This is such an important fight. Two of them having simultaneously Gumboot. Oh, I don't think he spotted out the side player. And that just might be it. The no scope is no good. And Z with a triple kill on the round. ASU. They are looking like they are in prime position to close out this yeah. map. ASU has been very successful on their ramp takes. And Shalek has been put in positions where he has to <laughs> make immaculate trades. And, he, and he, for the most part, he's been doing it this game. Um, and then ASU just slowed it down, kind of... Did a little big B. Okay. Like... This is such a good call from ASU. They know that Gumboot probably can't op and they're going to be fast. Gumboot is on an ump theory with no utility. This is an impossible task for Gumboot. That Molly makes it even harder. He escapes with his life, but the only thing he can tell his teammate is they took B. <laughs> 5v5 retake. Plenty of util. Double mollies. Plenty of flashbangs to gen flash through. And yeah, there it is. Gumboot going to try to make good. He actually does a lot of damage, but with UMP, how much can you really do? Z going to find Straylock, and now a 3 versus 5. 2 versus 5. This is looking like a clean T-side sweep for ASU CMX. Wondering what happened. The one round he plays away from B, they go B fast. And ASU, they just need one defense round to make this game. Or to make the series 1-0. For them moving into Mirage. Timeout being called from IEPY tech, to try to figure tech, out. Tech, yeah. tech. tech pause. These are tech pause. Yeah, AC looks, was AFK. They might. Yeah, it looks like Frost Promise might be AFK. She's the only one who hasn't bought or moved. EXT's inputting. So. Yeah, this is. um, I mean, this is looking like a one map from ASU at this point. It's, it's it's so crazy to say, we if you th there's a moment where it's seventeen to eighteen, 
IE Fuel is lead winning and Gumboot hits two AWP shots and has stalled for a CMX rotation and at the A site player rotations. And IE Fuel lose the round from that point and have lost three straight since. If you're Gumboot, you've got to just be shocked. A, a double kill from the B site wasn't enough. And then from that point on, ASU hits A ramp pretty much three straight times to look for openers, and they find them every time. Yeah. Oh, this has been a chaotic game. We'll see what happens. This map was scheduled to start at 9 o'clock. It is 10.48. Gumboot gonna rehash this early B peak that has worked before. Gonna receive nothing but fire. Sad on the mid lurk. It's wallbang from Straylock on the lineup. <laughs> he'll be happy to find that, but he'll probably will not be satisfied until this round win is in the books. I go shaping up for a late ramp take. Base firing through the smoke. Find some damage. Shrelock is going to be shut down on his midlurk after finding the opener. Which makes this push incredibly one-dimensional at this point for the IPI side. Patiently waiting out the remaining smoke durations are the Jaguars. ASU Patiently waiting out the first move. Base is going to spot out Gumboot's head there. And vice versa. Flashes of Molly's going to be thrown. Gumboot. Going to get swung. EXT can't find the kill. CMX will trade. Gumboot can't hit the shot on Anugi, who is going to escape. Three versus three. Now the case. Yiffen and Z still located on their original spots in mid and B. So no panic rotations in just yet. IEPY. Have plenty of utility, but not a whole lot of time. Only 33 seconds remaining. That is a fantastic nade. And another good molly. That's going to completely stop any left side smoke lineup. And with only 27 seconds left, you've got to assume that IEPI, they're going to be down to the wire here. Any amount of plant denial might be enough to move us right into Mirage. And with Gumboot only on 8 HP, it's going to be super easy to deny this bomb. Just one stray bullet. And this round is going to be over. Gumboot, does he even know he has the bomb? Just not realizing it. Gumboot goes down. CMX, there's no time. It's over. ASU is going to put us onto Mirage. What a chaotic map. What? What's up, baby? What happened there? I don't... Uh, time? Communication? I, I don't know. Regardless, ASU wins this chaotic, crazy-ass game. And... We're going to go to Mirage with ASU up 1-0. Um, ASU fought 4v5 for, I mean, the first seven, and then they played, did they play another one and to two played, rounds? They lost two straight in overtime because of it. 4v5, and so they played like eight or nine rounds 4v5 and still won the game. Yeah. Also, they were down 18 to 16. Yeah. And On we're also side. down three versus five. And three versus five. 17, 18. Yeah. Yeah, that is, a, that is an absolute collapse for IUPUI. But while we still got this scoreboard up, should be noted, base leading the ADR for the ASU side, CMX leading the ADR for the IUPUI side. Pretty even performances around the rest of the teams, really on both sides. But I think you can definitely identify the A-ramp hold for IUPUI being a strong weakness that ASU identified in that second overtime and completely abused. Uh, it really felt like it was a 5v3 or at least a 5v4 every time that a ramp was targeted. At the very least, ASU was exiting those ramp takes with 3 versus 3 at the very worst. And, and pretty much every time they took it, they were winning rounds from it. So I'm going to take a quick break, grab myself a drink and a snack, because that was uh, two hours since we started before we yep. finished map one. But Get a root beer. we'll be back for, uh, for uh, map two.
All right, we are back with map two. I've returned with some grapes and uh, an appetite for some more exciting CS. Fun. So, this is IPI's map pick. They'll start on the T side, almost certainly. As far as CT side rolls go, I'm assuming the Frost Promise is going to get her spot on B. Um, from there, I would assume that EXT is probably taking Connector and Shellacle both for A. With Gumboot and Window and CMX and Cat, but I'm not sure about that. And, I mean, it'll be interesting to see how IEPI responds after what is definitely a, uh, a tough loss on map one. Should start here within the next 60 seconds, and then we'll have to wait out a knife round and we'll be good to go. This is a... I mean, this is a map that... I mean, both teams should know very well. So... Should come down to the team play, and the uh, overall... aim and skill that... Uh, each team is, is on today. It's right now, I, honestly, we've seen we've seen a lot of highlight plays from both sides, particularly Gumboot on the IEPY side thus far. And, uh, I mean, we've seen a, a, almost the entire five step up from ASU at some point, so... I should be throwing this one. And ASU will likely elect to start on the CT side. So here we go. IEPY down 0 1 in the series. Looking to force Ancient or ASU. Trying to exit this week with a dub. Move to 4 and 1. Sending IEPY into the three and two bracket. Sherlock gonna be buying up smoke flash flash. I think we might see something called Tristan CS, the Tristan CS strategy. <laughs> if you know, you know. Sherlock walking into apartment, going to take some early space, drop the Glock. Now, how will Z react? Will there be instant rotations? Indeed, there will be. Based already on B, Sad already jumping into mid and spawning under now. How quickly will this fake be sussed out? Smoke's now being thrown on the bump side. Sherlock failing out. Here comes the A push. Just Yiffen here to receive. He is being pushed from every angle. Gumbu getting shot in the side from Connector. And now Yiffen, he has a one versus two on the site. EXT trying to get the kill. Frost promise sticking this bomb through everything will get it down. But a one versus four seems impossible, and it is. The strat worked. The frag just didn't follow. Yeah. Did pull the one guy over, um, and they do get the bomb plant, so we'll probably see a force by here, but the kills did not come the IPI's way. 
ASU takes a pistol round, which will hopefully be a very normal map of CS. That was a quick nah from Gumboot. <laughs> So, I feel I'm going to use that bomb plant to force up. All Galils, one smoke. How do you approach this right if you're IPI well? Right now it looks like they're gearing up for a contact. Be a quick, deep app smoke out of spawn for ASU, but no interest in using it. It'll be interesting to see if they default that smoke, because you don't see a whole lot of teams throwing that CT smoke every round, but if they don't use it this round, I wouldn't be surprised to see them use it. A lot of rounds where they don't plan on using it. Top mid being challenged. CMX, nice headshot onto Z, but at the cost of quite a bit of health. Gumboot has a decent lurk here onto Catwalk. Will likely be challenged by Sad if any other approach is taken. Meanwhile, Noogie, no respect, pushes into apartments, finds Frost Promise, and most likely the bomb. Gumboot going to find base, but Noogie already an underpass posted up on CMX's swing. Gumboot going to take a lot of space towards B, and this could be an opening into this round. Will Noogie expect it? Seems like he is. EXT going to find Sad in Connector, and Gumboot is going to shoot Noogie right in the back of the head. So, a very weird round thus far, but right now, favoring the Jaguars after what looks like a very grim scenario with Bomb Down and Apps. With under CT control, now it's all on to Yiffen, on to Catwalk. Bomb is just now going to round the corner apartments. Ask if going to peek as well. So maybe there's a chance to find this bomb. Nope. Going to be thrown down. Gumboot on an off angle. It's a headshot and the spray. Triple kill for Gumboot in the round. Great decision making to take map control when he did. And IEPY, they will win the Galil Force buy. Yep. Um, pistol rounds are just RNG anyways. First buy round goes to IEPY's way. Galil's OP. 1-1. As we'll see a deco here for uh, ASU with one MP9. Yep. Don't get one dig mid challenge. Yeah, it doesn't look like anything special's thrown in just yet. Z's going to be pretty aggro underpass right now. Sherlock there to receive that flashbang is so good. Sherlock does make an escape though. One up for B tech twice for the deagle. That is true, Z. That is a good yeah. call. Quick scaling down mid though for IEPY. I'm going to trade that. Oh! What is that from Sad? A quick double. Oh my god, they're not even looking at window. From mid window in base finds two with the deco. Now it's just Straylock who got tagged up earlier, and that's a, a deco clear victory for the ASU Sun Devils. Deco victory. Z, absolute god caller, by the way. Everything he said was correct. This guy's comms are immaculate. But um, yeah, just no one was looking window. Uh, two people bottom mid. So focused on the smoke and Window guy just was able to take pot shots. Someone's got to be holding window there. As we'll see a force back uh, by the IPI side. Yeah, I mean, it's force wars, but I mean, with all the AKs on the CT side this time, it's not going to look likely for IPI. Going to need some Deagle heroics from CMX. Hold it on chair instantly. This batch of CMX also going to be killed. Long range rifle. Frost Promise catches out an over aggressive Yiffen, but that's only going to be worth so much when Bomb is down T spawn and CTs are quickly rotating into the map control. EXT finds a nice counter strafe headshot on the SAD. Cannot finish off base though, so pretty clean round, all things considered, for ASU and the economy will build and the T sides will save. Couple pieces of utility bought up from the T side here, but you've got to assume this is going to be a pretty clean round win for ASU. Once again, that deep app smoke going to be used, but the T side will not be respecting that at all this round. Quick rush through the apartments, all five for the T side. What can they do with these Glocks? The maid is going to collect two players. Complete chaos for Noogie. Not actually able to find a single player in all of that chaos, but 
it's very unlikely for even a bomb. Plant to be conducted here. And Strelock with the Glock, okay. full chaos is burst down base. Uh, his his life is uh, not going to be very long following that, I believe, though. Z was out for an ace there. Strelock running away. No guns to be retrieved in their spawn. And it's going to be collected. 4-1 to for ASU and uh, IUPY finally going to be back on a buy, but unless they make some special accommodations, there's not going to be an AWP here. I feel like I need a timeout here. Hard to know if it's a tech or if it's to organize a default. But we'll see. Very important round for IPI here. At the very least, you're going to want a bomb plant to keep, you know, the CT economy contested and also yours alive. On the CT side, I think, I mean, generally they can afford a round loss here if they can save a couple of guns. Molly being thrown in to stop any smoke denial, but... IEPI gonna throw the smoke that typically stops that, however, there is a gap, and EXT's gonna be collected because of it. Sherlock had quite a bit of danger as well if he sneaks out any further. Very aggressive cat is Z. He had such a great round of the round prior to collect all those ecos, and he's already on the board again. Gumbo goes down. Frost Promise next, and now it's just CMX that quick. 1 minute and 20 seconds still left in the round, CMX is in a 1 versus 5. He only finds 1. And ASU is looking dominant right now on Mirage. Yep. This T side is not getting much going. IPI needs to figure something out quick. Rather that be maybe a delayed. You know what? I think. I think we're gonna see a safe here, and then we're gonna see a fast day, and we'll see what I happens. Mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see that at all. I mean, IPI had some success in mid against, you know, the basic rifles without utility. But as soon as this op has been brought out, I. I'm skeptical. Looks like there's going to be a pretty fast con play here. Sad and Z going to double up. Base find one for himself as well. And uh, CMX and EXT are collected. The CT economy is absolutely booming. One player even on 10,000. And IEPY, on the other hand, need to win a round. It... If not now, it, it's going to look very grim for this half. This is, however, the exact same scoreline they found themselves in in the previous game. The caveat, of course, being that they were down, that ASU was down a man that to establish that scoreline, so a bit weird. But no fast A for the Jaguars, however, there are a lot of players headed towards B. So maybe, maybe the execute is, is more focused on B than A. Gumbo with the AWP. He's up quite a bit, and Noogie seems like he might want to make something happen here. Flashbang comes in. Gonna full blind Gumbo. And goes down, but Frost Promise trades. No quick play from IEPI from that point. Yiffen is in a bit of a grub position, Sandwich. And this is not an easy position to clear from the Tetris Lurk. Sherlock up on Tetris himself. B players now roasting out of apps, headed towards T spawn, looking like an A play will develop here. I think the CTs also are starting to get that feeling, rotating a player away from market, headed into window. Utility should be good for a pretty solid execute here from the T side. And Yiffen will be the point of first contact, unless Sad gets aggressive. Here come the Molotovs. No flashes just yet. Sherlock gonna jump onto sandbags. That flash is gonna be blinding. Good flash. From the side of ASU, and now a two versus three. EXT and CMX versus three players, and C CMX is taking a lot of map control. And we'll find a kill through the smoke. Now it's just on the base. AWP and smoked off. That Molotov is going to force even closer. Collects an AK-47. CMX is going to hear that. Only six bullets. Five. And CMX gets a 3K. That was looking kind of 
Kind of bad for IEP wise that started to develop, but the frags are found. EXT and CMX make it happen. Yep, all the trees come through the right way. They walk on the A, contact it, found the trades that they needed to, and IPY picked up a much, a very needed second round. Um, as we'll see, uh, another buy in from the CT side. They should have enough for one more buy round after this if IPY goes on the win this round too. CMX on the op, probably. Yeah, he had the spawn. spawn, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. He's, he he, he's hit the cat jump? jump, yeah. Yeah. So this is going to be hard to predict. Be a... You need a flashbang here or else uh, you're likely going to go down for free. Strelok, speaking of going down for free, goes down on the A ramp lurk, and now IPI might just be pivoting to a B contact play. Yeah. Z is on an angle where, I mean, this is very good against contact plays if you're still uh, walking at the point of this window. The Rainbow Six Siege. Shout out, Wrath. Wow. This is an incredibly strong setup for ASU right now. Doesn't, they and threw middle. smoke, so they should be flashes. Okay, yeah, okay that's blind. a great flash. Yep. Z's going to have to fall off. Okay, the bomb site has been taken. Cat rotation's in so fast, though. Noogie finds EXT. They're, not, they're probably not even ready for the guy in sight because they see two cat. Yep, they're not. Okay, Frost still gets one kill. God, they, yeah, Gumboot not close. Gumboot actually Ooh. finds the kill. What? Noogie thought he killed him. Gumboot goes down. Now CMX in a one versus one with the MVP. He finds yeah. it. Wow. They were... There was four people. There were four CTs on that bomb site, and IPY still are able to find those trades and win that round. That is actually insane. The flashes were good. Uh, it was a great call to actually throw like a, a set execute, not just contact, because I think I think that angle gets two there if they just walk in. Flashes were good, forced them off, and yeah, I mean ASU played it right. They had four people there, and they just did not hit any shots. IPY, huge round the win. If they win this round. It, AC will be forced to save, and it will be a six. Could yeah, be a yeah. six five I mean, the, the economy issue has been completely been erased from the IQI man. side. Man, Z continues to make. You know what's great crazy calls. to me is is Z. Every com we've heard from them is probably every com he's ever made, which means he's coming like once every five rounds. <laughs> you think so? And, unless he's like only mispressing that button half the time, I don't know. Wow, oh. sad doubles up. Ext and Frost and promise. And has bomb. And has bomb. The two new players on this varsity squad can't find the entries onto ramp there. And they have taken so much space. Yeah, Strelok just is not ready for that level of aggression. Sad. All the way up on the balcony. Yiffen jumping even more aggressive. Gumbu goes down. Now CMX. He won the clutch last round, but this is a whole nother. They know he has an op. They know where he is because he just killed a teammate now. So they know he's late. They have time to be in position to trade. And... Definitely going to be hard. An AWP. Got to isolate these angles. Although Yiff is going to give him a freebie. Yeah, that's okay. that's a bit confusing. I mean, it's it's winnable if he can find base here. Oh, almost. Eh. Timeout being called from IPUI. Not only do they have a bit of a complicated economy question here, but I think losing around like that in the fashion they did is, is definitely going to warrant some some organization. Z is on 13 kills. It is worth noting that four of them were on a anti-eco B rush, but leading the way for his team currently. Also leading the way in terms of less deaths. Meanwhile, on the IEPI side, CMX is completely leading his team. 108 ADR, closest second is on 55. That's Gumboot. CMX likely thinking about, you know, I mean, he, he could buy down to match his team at this point, but I think the impact that the AWP has had for the T side, especially on that B site clutch, is, is definitely weighing on his decision to stay at 4150. Early B app smoke once again being thrown. T side, B site default, likely a B site rush. Underpass is being pushed from Z, but you can ignore this. Wow, he actually finds Sherlock on that wall bang. The jump from Sherlock was enough for. Z to make that kill happen. That Molotov in response from Noogie completely shuts down this fast B and likely shuts down any attempt from IEPY to win this. I mean, we mentioned the economy finally being close. Gumboot can't find the long range Deagle. Flash is being thrown to help the mid players. 
the question here is how many kills you can get on the CT is not if you can win the round. Okay, nice shot from CMX on his sad there. EXT Ooh, finds one himself. Okay. Three versus three, but uh, the current health bar is at up to 23 for IEPY. And uh, Noogie has gotten behind enemy lines and will end it. Eight to three, quite a good lead here for ASU. Moving into the final stages of this first half. Yep, CMX. CMX yeah, that was instant. He's feeling the off. Like, he's, he's an offer now. He, he was hitting some nice shots, though. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, if you get yourself to completely leading your team in terms of fragging output this early into a game where you're losing, I think, you know, you got to call your own number at some points here. CMX is also like over a thousand elo bar on this team. If you put stock in the fake elo. Molotov is enough to cover that jump through. Quick, aggressive cat play once again from Z. Gonna hop up and try to contest under most likely. But the under players are quite close. They're gonna spot him out. That's gonna be a free one for EXT. Sad playing that connector one way. Fortunately for him, it's worn off. No one has exited this underpass area. That Molotov might expedite some decision making. Indeed, Gumboot and Frost Promise will find themselves into middle. Smoke's being thrown for top connector. EXT got to find an apps push. Punishing Noogie for what has been a very aggressive B site thus far. Base going to find Gumboot lurking up. CMX on the AWP will trade onto Sad. Now a three, or sorry, a two versus four. Based hearing EXT scale up quite a bit. This op is trained right on his location, and that's an easy kill. So what was quite a large advantage for IEPY is now narrowed down to just one. And with how little map control IEPY has, well, I say that, now Based has lurked up Catwalk and given CMX a kill for himself. So, Yiffen, one versus three isn't, I would argue, maybe the best spot possible to contest the, uh, the ramp crawl here from the IEPY Jaguar side. So we could see something here from him. Utility in. CMX jumping up. Gonna go down. Yiffen shoots. Position known. Sherlock and Frost promise. Both looking to take this fight. Now Sherlock abandoning that to go for a bomb plant. Only 14 seconds left forces that decision. Yiffen not able to take advantage of that time frame. But he's now trying to make some space with some jiggle peaks. Finds Sherlock transfers onto Frost promise. And will win the 1 versus 2. An unthinkable round to lose from IEPY. A 1 versus 3. And a 1 versus 2 with bomb down and position known. And a close angle. That's that has got to be so tilting for the Jaguars. Yeah, that's that unbelievable. Just, I don't know how he's able to isolate there. That should just be a quick trade, but I don't know. I guess whiffs. Uh, that is not a round that IPY should be losing. They yeah, need I mean, I mean, Yiffen was able to jiggle out so many times that he was able to identify the positions of both players and basically full blown pre fire trail like out of the round and was able to clean up Frost Promise following that. So, yeah. That is uh, majorly impactful, not only for the round win, but also for the economy. IEPY onto zeros across the board in their bank accounts. ASU Sun Devils already guaranteed a nine-round CT half, which is really more than enough to win a game on Mirage. Aggressive lurk from Noogie, changing away from B onto Palace, and Sherlock not looking at all. What? Noogie, you are so bad. Quit the game. Holy shit. Yeah, I actually kind of agree. <laughs> I don't... That is... Crazy. Gumboot gonna find Z. Another aggressive cat play. Finally shut down into the early stages. Other than from underpass lurks. And, uh... IEPY intends to go A here. There are two players here to receive. One of them has just been headshot by Straylock. And Yiffen, he is in the exact same position he clutched the last round from, but this is a, a little bit more difficult, we'll say. A 1 versus 5. Base on Catwalk is currently smoked off, but has some angles that might not be expected. Ooh, very close. Lucky to be alive. I think that was Frost Promise with the utility out. See if he's going to opt into a save here. That round went from map control towards A, completely lost, to a back... It was literally straight like back turn looking at ramp. Noogie 
basically just execution style angle and a complete whiff and Sherlock turns and hits that spray headshot. And that, that's really what leads to the round win because Sherlock entries the stairs player on A after that. Unbelievable scenes. 9 to 4. IEPY still has quite a bit of work to do to make this half. 9 to 6. Especially considering the CTs are, uh, are going to be at least able to get up a hero AWP this round from, they, from which they saved. Rifles being bought up. It looks like Noogie's going to be forced onto a pistol or a, an MP9. Dropped two. Going to be a deagle. So, four rifles. Noogie going to be representing some kind of weak spot on the map. Full map default from IEPY. Sherlock going to be opting into this palace location. I mean, it's also should... should It's worth noting that Sherlock had one kill when he was holding a ramp. And then Noogie whiffs and he finds two more in that one round so moving from one to three kills in, in one round where he should have been instantly dead mid control starting to be pushed from the IPI side smoke's being thrown for gumboot to smoke top con A lot of space really being given from the CTs here. Very passive mid setup. Willing to let the T's take everything but the connectors to the bomb sites right now. Gumbu gonna molly off. Window gonna be taking space towards ladder. Takes out his pistol. CMX able to trade. And avoids being traded from the connector player just barely. Now, Nugi on apartments will activate following EXT's op from market. Frost Promise is able to trade. Low HP on both T-side players. CMX dodging shots every which way. Now on the B-bomb site, Frost Promise knows the AWP is trained on her. CMX lurking up E-box. Based, able to hit that headshot onto CMX. Forced to reload. Frost Promise, one versus two. Hops down van. Based, so close. Will go down, Frost Promise. Cannot find Yefen, and that will be a 10th round for ASU. IEPY. Best they can do is five. Uh, base base AWP has been, I think, just so impactful, not only in mid, but also on his rotations. Shows in that round, for sure. Catches off EXT as he tries to make contact into apartments, which makes space for Nuki on apartments balcony to take this fight on a stray lock with the Deagle. Now based on Catwalk, that's going to be tilting for CMX, just trying to escape from mid. Gets opt. You take the 3600, face it, Pugger to Mirage, you better not miss. And currently, IEPY <laughs> is suffering the results of it. A site execute likely to happen for the Jaguars. Only one smoke left on the utility belts, though, and that's going to be Straylock. Where will that be deployed? Molly's. It's going to be used on stairs. Jungle and stairs. Both now smoked. CT. Left unsmoked. Yiffen. Going to flash and swing. The side smoke's going to prevent any default fight. Gumboot going to get the bomb down, but a 3 versus 5 post point on the A side of Mirage is not going to be easy. And it's proving that thus far. Gumboot and Frost Promise fall. And ASU is going to exit the first half with 11 CT side rounds. IEPI is going to need quite a CT effort to make this game. There's and to put us on the ancient. <sighs> yep. I'm just happy a normal Mirage CT side, no 5v4s, um, no people yeah. lagging out and stuff. And uh, yeah, ASU played a very solid Mirage CT side. Um, retakes were good. The op was impactful. Um, so we'll see what IFU is cooking on the CT side. See if they make a game out of this. CMX is holding tab and maybe getting a little tilted. Yeah. Perhaps. Quick A site execute looking like looking like likely right I should side say. With CT. CMX is CMX I mean they they have a, a pretty solid A setup here to defend this. 
CMX under Palace. Hasn't been cleared yet. Gonna take the swing. Finds base. That's a good kill. And it is all going the way of IEPY. A 5 alive complete slaughter of that A side execute. Two for CMX and uh, one for everyone alongside him, save Frost Promise. So yeah. if you're gonna start out a half, that's a good way to do it. Great way to start off the half as uh, they kept it clean by the books. IEVI buying up a lot of M4s here. I mean, I, maybe they were expecting a force buy without the bomb down. That's kind of unexpected. Um, gonna be a palace pop. I don't, there's not even gonna be utility thrown from the T side here. This is just gonna be a full blown palace pop. Straylock currently looking towards ramp. I don't think he's aware of the danger that faces him. Palace, and here they come, all five. The calls are gonna be yelled. Rotate A now, they're pushing me. And uh, he is only able to find one and gives up the Famas in the process. Frost Famas is going to be left to pick up that. Try to defend that weapon. Flash comes in for Yellen. Dinks up Frost Promise very quickly, but it's only a Glock. Famas will trade, though. Base goes down to the scouts. And now if you're Yiffen, do you consider just running away with the M4? I think I would. Yeah, Molly goes in. He's going to save this A1S. Bomb plant, save an A1S. You're going to be in a much better uh, position um, from an economy standpoint than the CTs next round for sure. So, deficit reduced to five rounds, but IEPY, they're really not in a position to lose this next gun rounds. Any any loss, any loss of rounds from here, or any you know close round losses that f are followed by a round or close round wins that are followed by a round loss will will result in ASU getting free rounds against ecoing players. So, IEPY really needs some solid gun rounds to start off this half. Three starting to, I think there might have been a bit of confusion as to where everyone was playing. And ASU has taken full advantage of, of the lack of mid presence, and they have taken so much space. EXT is not going to be ready for this close cap player, but CMX, he does his job from connector, and we'll find that kill. Saving EXT the surprise. Now CMX getting challenged. He finds another one. Yiffen trades actually Gumboot, not CMX. Still unscathed in this round is CMX on 100 HP. This Palace Lurk has been called from Straylock. CMX is doing so much work for his team right now. On to 20 kills. Looks like this round is going to end on the A bomb site via ASU's decision. Straylock completely out of utility. Playing from default. This is not going to be a great while. Wow, that timing was insane. Just barely sneaking into Under Palace. Here comes Yiffen scaling out Sandwich. So many angles here. That smoke will give away at least one person's position in Straylock's mind. That Molly will make things quite difficult. He's going to jump up. Two players standing right at him. That's a free kill for ASU. Now CMX trying to make a lurk play on this gap in the smoke, but he goes down from connector. Trade is there for EXT. Two versus two post plant. No kit on either player for the CTs. Frost Promise lurking ups from CT. Both T's currently looking there and will escape. EXT, full belt of utility. I'm surprised he hasn't used any yet. Looks like that Molotov will be used on Firebox, and it's going to be a good one if it is. He's actually going to deploy a ramp, and it... Frost Promise is going to clear Firebox. We'll get the kill. This bomb is default. Frost Promise in a one versus one. Taps the bomb. Yiffen forced to come up and clear. Frost Promise gets the kill, and that is a one versus one victory for her. Keeps IEPY in the game, but the economy is not going to be great for them despite that. No. Uh, Frost will have to for, uh, have to drop someone. Um... Yeah, I guess I I I was honestly shocked the palace person found the kill. Like I think Shell didn't communicate he wasn't holding palace because two people were looking con and the palace guy got a free one. Nevertheless, though, um, a great retake by Ext and Frost. Uh, is every round is valuable now? Ipy down four here as a win here will put the T's unless they get a bomb plant on potential eco and. See if they can keep the rounds rolling. Yeah, I mean, this was looking a lot like their Vertigo T side if this is going to be a B rush. There were a lot of very fast plays. EXT and Frost Promise left with an all to do. I mean, these are also the same players that were targeted at A ramp quite a bit. So, the continuation of that storyline here EXT being flashed, players dropping in everywhere. He gets the first kill on site. Wall of smokes created by himself onto this bomb site. The smoke is not good. CMX will find sad. Scaled up on Van. 
Trade comes in from Straylock. Frost Promise hiding jail this whole time will activate. And now it's a one versus two. Lurking in from Catwalk is Yiffen. Find Straylock. Frost Promise needs to trade and will. Long range M4A1S spray is good. And IEPY once again win she another round from Frost Promise one versus one. And she didn't grab the op that was on site. I don't. Interesting. But. Another 1v1 win from Frost. Uh, she just chilled Jail the whole time using her Lurk Smoke or Defensive Smoke, and it paid out and got her two kills. Um, IPY, though, not going to have an op here this round. Um, and they are still poor as it was, went down to one person again. So, ASU is one round away from breaking the CT economy. Wow, this is ambitious from Z. He takes 40 Molotov damage just to get to this angle, hoping that a triple player will swing. No success there yet. Shog jumping up, will be spotted. Smoke comes into Palace, but this Lurk is way farther than I think any CT is going to expect. I mean, Z is literally out sandwich. Not going to be spotted. Frost Promise starts hitting him from CT spawn. Two players close con and stairs. Flashbang comes in, completely deletes. Gumboot, now CMX left with it. All to do, he finds another. He finds a third, a fantastic triple from CMX. A round saving triple from CMX. Base now. Trying to make some space. Not able to find CMX. On for the ace is CMX. 25 kills to 15 deaths. He is single-handedly keeping his team in this game. And Noogie, so aggressive on the CT side. Now left in a 1 versus 4. 53 seconds off. This is exactly what IEPI needed to start to build up a bank. And with no bomb plant, the T side is facing the opposite result. Sherlock on a firebox off angle. Will dink up Nugi through a wall. CMX in for the ace. He will collect. I think Sherlock actually dinked and then hid so that CMX could collect that ace. That's massive, massive ups to Sherlock for that one. Yeah, and finally a convincing win for the CT side. This is gonna... Okay, well... I, I thought the economy was more bad than... Yeah, I mean, well, you still see two Galoos on MAC-10, and yeah. you don't see full utility on a lot of these players, so... I mean, this is not going to be a fully optimal buy, but it's going to be enough to, for them to strategize up, around a bit. Chris, uh, or CMX, no head armor, so potential for these next Yeah, no good point. Cool. And Galil's. Yeah. Quick. Oh, this is just going to be a fast cat to B play. Yes, man. Oh, Gumbu finds just a, a sliver of a gap in that smoke and finds it. Now, EXT, he's get right. This is not an easy angle to clear as you come up cat because you're just worried about so many off angles from market. Base will clear it, though, and EXT cannot find even one there. Frost Promise doubles up from the misdirection. So three versus two. Bomb sight not taken from base. He's actually going to bail out of this position. Straylock, he's holding the escape. And base, he's going to give him a free kill now. All onto Yiffen. He's mid. Not, not, oh, I thought he was going to go con. I was going to say Straylock's not looking at the con play, but Yiffen decides to go back under. Yeah. Straylock's walking up. Wow. Lucky to be alive. Some erratic movement there. Oh, well, okay. that's interesting. I guess he thought he went under. I mean, with 55 seconds left, there's so much time. The CTs are just, like, so aggressive here. They will find that yeah. kill, though. Nice headshot from Gumboot. And they were they were giving him a chance for two 1v1s. Guy cat, guy ladder. But doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, I, as I they scaled up cat, round. like, EXT takes the aggro here, so all the T-side players turn to look at this angle, and then Frost Promise just has a lineup on all three players, is able uh -huh. to find two. And, I mean, Frost Promise, as the CT gun rounds have started, has not only clutched two one versus one, but also has gotten two uh, doubles on side holds at this point, so definitely pulling her weight as the substitute thus far on this Mirage CT side. Not the same situation we saw on Vertigo A ramp, where her and EXT were definitely targeted by the ASUT side. Full deagles. Finally on a save. <laughs> and IEPY, if they can close out this deco, will even the scoreline to 11. To 11. Frost Promise finds a lurking base on Apartments Balcony. CMX going to collect Z in middle. And, uh, I mean, at this point... If you're IPY, you want every player to survive with as much utility as possible. You can start to get a bit greedy in a 5 versus 3 like this. Straight lock, jump spotting. Is going to get his head taken off by Noogie. He's going to take the space immediately. Not without a cost of his health. 
Gumboot. Also chipping in damage, and we'll finish that one. CMX will finish Yiffin, and Sad goes down to a strafing gumboot. So, game is tied at 11. Similar situations that we really saw last game. It was close down the stretch. It required a comeback from IEPY in the last map. ASU actually going to dig into their tech pause time here. More routing issues, probably. Base is... Opted for Obno Armor, or not Obno Armor, Obno Util. Um, knew he could have bought him, but he just impulse buys that. This be a full buy round, full Util, full everything. I think this is the first op on the T side, I could be wrong though. He was doing a lot. I think he ended... He ended the first half with 17 kills. He has not gotten a kill on the C side. Base has. Yeah, I mean, he just did so much damage in the first half from, not, I mean, mainly the AWP in mid, but also uh, on rotations as well. I mean, the IFUI CT side is just, we really haven't seen situations where players are getting solo entry upon. Um, outside of some like rare late round lurks like we saw last round with the Desert Eagle on a straight lock. A lot of these situations are, you know, crossfires have been established. I mean, a great example is just the pistol round. I mean, T is just flooding into a, a triple USP crossfire. Play up Cat ended up in a crossfire between Get Right and um, Broken Pillar. And... The former B side execute had many players rotating in. EXT threw a nice lurk smoke to create some space for himself and to create some rotating time to create crossfires from market. So I mean the CT side thus far has been has been pretty solid from IPO from a site defense level. Um, ASU has I, I admittedly taken a, a lot of a lot of uh, map control towards mid, but it, it hasn't been enough to you know split bomb sites effectively yet. We'll see if they can put that together. Gumboot spraying through the smoke is actually able to slow down the push and deal some damage, but CMX, he is anti-flash as can be, and Yiffen is running through, and it is an absolute meat grinder. CMX finds three, up to 31 kills in 23 rounds. This unbelievable performance from him on Mirage thus far. EXT up on Catwalk. Gonna try to trade Sad, but Stralock will beat him to the punch. And now based on the AWP... We might see an outsider save here with a minute and 20 left. He is left with really nothing to do but to probably save this thing. Yeah, let's save it or be a hero considering uh, not many people are like James. He'll probably be trying to go see if he can play through him. Wow. He cannot. Okay. Uh, just an amazing performance from CMX and Mirage thus far. Making up for Big Daddy A's absence. 32 kills and 23 rounds. Second on the scoreboard is at 15 for his team. I mean, if he just keeps up the same pace he's at, he's 40 bombing in regulation. Crazy stuff from CMX. And I mean, the CT economy we talked about has, has, has been built up now. Only Gumboots on zero. Looks like we're going to see an A execute here. I think this is the first time we'll see a true A execute really be pushed onto the IPOI CT defense. We saw a fast pistol round, but it really wasn't execute. Sherlock going to be throwing a defensive default smoke for himself. Trying to isolate some fights. He finds Sad, but cannot find the kill. And CT has been fully taken. Seabag's going to find Sad. Finish that off, but with CT under control, this post point becomes a lot more difficult. Frost is going to try to stop that, but Z too quick on the op trigger. These post plans from ASU are, are fantastic. There's only... I mean, there's two smokes from the IPY side, but not only two players as well. Smoke goes in, Palace. Swing comes in, CMX finds the kill. See it with the NBP posted up on EXT's location. Is going to find that kill as well. Now CMX, the only player to get a kill for IEPY in this round, is going to run away with the AK. Save what he can. Yeah, for the just next a day. very simple A take, classic A Mirage smoke. And... Shaylik just. I, I mean, I guess he takes a bad fight there, CT, maybe? Or I mean, he was he was holding him. his line, and the player swung right into him, and just, just couldn't yeah. finish it. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, you see two types of Lurk Smokes from CT. You'll either see this kind of, like, front default one to, like, make sure that as they're crossing, you can just isolate default. Or you see one that's, like, thrown out here in front of Ticket. You can jump up here and use it as a one-way, or you can Lurk through behind it and fight players, like, here and here. Um, yeah, when he, when, so. he threw, when he threw the, the default Lurk Smoke, I, I assumed that, like, he would play around that and not just go back in the CT. Like, usually you, like, maybe, like, take an off angle or, not like, an off. Like, yeah, and like an off angle of like uh, ninja or something, like play around it, but he liked to go back. No to mid window smoke. Gumboot actually was just fighting with anyone else there. So this is an A fake to a mid or B contact, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's no B rotation really at all yet. BXT gonna find a pick on Catwalk from ladder room. Good off angle there. Smoke. Frost Promise is going to spot out that first player, now making the decision to bail off the bomb sites. Kind of fumbling with utility. We'll find the first going on off angle, but traded from sight. Not aware that that player could have been that fast. Two versus three. AWP from Z. Posted on CMX. That's a free kill. Two versus two. Bomb down. One smoke. One kit. Lurk smoke being thrown from Straylock, but it's so close. Yiffen. This is going to be a hard fight to win for Straylock. Fake flash being thrown. No reaction at all. Yiffen loses the fight. Now Gumboot in a one versus one. Needs to tap the bomb, make something happen. Flashbang comes in from Z. Quick peek, op shot happens. So, swings away, Gumboot wins it! That is a puzzling swing from Z. Maybe trying to catch a timing where Gumboot's trying to look down at the bomb and defuse, but not quick enough, and Gumboot wins that. Wow. Yeah, I, that's just not a round that ASU should be losing there. Um, I don't know why you're trying to take the wide swing and actually op him, just shouldering. Well, he didn't even shots. hit. I mean, Gumboot had tapped that bomb, like, maybe 1.5 seconds ago. And he's, like, yeah. acting like he needed a full swing to stop a 5-second defuse. Yeah. That's puzzling. Very puzzling. Yeah, very puzzling. Um, oh, this is a fast uh, day. Team Ace from IPY there. That last round. Right, CMX and, and Sherlock are going to be challenged yet again. Quick A play. They are out. They are out fast. Sherlock tags base down quite a bit. That nade's going to tag Yiffen down quite a bit. Palace Lurk now just being activated. CMX does some good damage. Only finds one kill, though. Sherlock with the AWP rotating in. Fights going through the smoke. Frost Promise EXT Sherlock left versus Noogie based on Yiffen. And Sherlock has just lost his life. Making this just now a 1 versus 3 for EXT. What has happened? EXT, this is so winnable. Both players down on such low HP. Need to use your utility in an effective way. Will flash himself out. Close triple. There's one enemy, the other rotating to Khan. This bomb is not in a very good place for EXT. That smoke. I don't think he realized where it was planted, and he's getting wrapped and swung. Another A execute goes the way of ASU, and you've got to wonder if IEPY starts to make adjustments on that bomb site. Yeah, definitely something needs to be done. I mean, that round, CMX and Trey, like, did so much damage. Um, I guess maybe not getting the kills uh, kind of affected that, but that's a round that IEPY should be winning m more times than they're not. Um, what 13-13 and IPY economy in the dumpster forced to double here. They lose this. They're gonna concede 15. So. Yeah, I mean CMX. He's the one you want on this gun, and he's got it. Quick, another quick play from ASU. I mean, the one common trait of all these ASU T sides right now is a very quick play. CMX, basically sacrificing Gumbo there for that kill. Almost lost his life in the process. EXT making a lurk play up the catwalk gets shut down. Three, all four players for ASU in mid right now. CMX trying to work around these angles just to get something. Z is lurked out stairs. Frost Promise goes down in a cat rotation. CMX will find a timing there. T side a bit panicky now. CMX only able to dink up a player now. Straylock close stairs. Can't find anything. ASU on the brink of series victory. Two rounds away. IEPI onto a save. Fifteen to thirteen, looking incredibly likely for ASU. A stack being brought out by IEPY, most likely in reaction to the multiple A executes and A splits that have been thrown their way. CMX with the Desert Eagle on catwalk can only really hope to slow down the push. No shot there. 
That was an incredibly fast round. Just completely lined up. And now it all rests on this. No budget in the CT economy for an AWP. No budget in CMX's economy for utility. Has been thrown a Molotov. But that's it. One round stands between ASU and series victory. Uh, in what has been a very chaotic series. Unorthodox. CMX has griefed the smoke, but that's a really good flash. And they threw double smoke, so... Mid control taken. Quick lurk here. Incredibly quick lurk from base. He's just running out. Not able to find Frost Promise, though. That smoke gave away his intentions. Yiffen gonna find Gumboot on top stairs from Palace. A lot of pressure being put on A here. C is taken all the way into ladder room. CMX goes down to connector. That is not a good sign for Sherlock, who needs to go huge on this bombsite defense. The flash is good, and the frag is even better. X EXT in danger from ladder. Is able to make that turn. A bit of a whiff there from Z. Sat on the AK. Oh, almost got free fired. Frost Thomas making the lurk into CT. Yiffen holding for this bomb plant. Frost Thomas lurking up. Barely alive. Runs away. One bullet on each player is all ASU needs. That Molotov, not able to collect the EXT, jumps through, gets onto stairs, just to find the odds right now to even get this far. Frost Promise uses that distraction to find one kill. Yiffen in a one versus two, finds the EXT reloading and jumping. Frost goes down as well. A 4K for Yiffen in the deciding round at ASU. They 2-0 IEPUI despite all of their internet difficulties. The four versus five. And really defying the odds to come back on Vertigo. As well yeah. in, in the first overtime. Uh, IPA started at CT seven kills. straight rounds and then lost. CMX the ends the game. map with 138 ADR and 38 <sighs> kills and a regulation loss. Weedify gonna look good though. So, looking forward to what we might have next week. Now we'll put. IEPUI at 3 and 2. Yep. Uh, that'll put them into the 3 and 2 bracket. Where? Let's see here. Oops. Standings, please. So. Yeah. A lot, a lot of teams in 3 and 2. It's, uh... Gonna be a pretty popular location to be. Doesn't look like I don't I, I don't think IEPUI has played really any team. Just quick scrolling through here. Purdue Black in 3-2, UVA in 3-2. NC State, which is a team that's lost to um, ASU 2 0 prior to that. Uh, I think in week one, so. I think IEPUI at this point, I think that's that's just that's not a loss that IEPUI probably really felt like they would have taken, save the substitute situation. It's definitely going to be a loss that at the end of the season they're going to be thinking about, you know, their seating with regards to playoffs, and you know, if Andy doesn't get banned on face it, does this does does our seating in playoffs look different? Um, I think definitely Vertigo is a map that because of how close, I mean, both maps were were, were within two rounds, so th those are both maps where you're, where you're you're going to look at that and wonder. What would have what would have changed if Big Daddy A was playing? Uh, especially considering Big Daddy A was was thirty bombing in, in maps prior, so yeah, a big what if there for IPY. Big what if. Other than that, um, the next game, like uh, generally, is, is going to be Friday or Monday nights. I think this was kind of a special situation where they scheduled it on a Sunday night, but expect similar times uh, next week. If you are looking to watch more IEPUI CSGO, I mean, almost every series we've watched really has been thrilling in one way or another, whether it's uh, overtimes every map or close maps every map, uh, or it's a Davenport stomp. I think both were moderately entertaining. The series started at 9, had two maps, and ended at midnight, so that's a bit unhinged, but you know, here we are. And any final words, Jack XCD, any final pieces of wisdom? Nope.